And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Shoot Brothers Wrestling Podcast, episode 168 of the Shoot Brothers. My name is Cameron Osborne. I am uh, I am joined by my co-host. Uh, his name is Mike the Shoot Shepherd. And he's standing right over there. Uh, as we bring to you another week in all that is professional wrestling. Big week here on the pod. Um, we've got uh, the Royal Rumble coming up. Uh, some 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 people's favorite pay per view uh, yeah. on this podcast and off of the podcast. <laughs> it's one of the most exciting times in professional wrestling because this is uh, this is kind of where our road to WrestleMania begins. It's sign point in season, baby. That's right, and all the surprises that come with it, the mysterious entrances, returns, all that fun stuff. Let the rumor, the rumor mill, rumor mill's already flying. AC Dirt's been texting me off the hook, so we'll, we'll address some and of that And he's later. texting you from a 555 number. Like, he is <laughs> super off the grid. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we have all that. Uh, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about the rumble at the end of the show, of course. Um, I think we still have maybe nine entrants left on the women's side, and then a few also on the men's side. Um, we have uh, brand new champions. Uh, we have people really exploring the brand-to-brand invitational element of WWE Season 3 now. I should mention we are in Season 3. Uh, <laughs> but let's uh, let's kick off the podcast the way that we always do, which is by crowning a brand new Tweet of the Week champion. It's the Tweet of the Week. It's the Tweet of the Week. Uh, a couple good qual- a couple good ones this week uh, for Tweet of the Week champion, um, but none other than recently it came out uh, that Sami Zayn has re-signed a longish long-term deal with the WWE, despite speculation amongst the whole the whole community about exactly what's going on with his contractual status. Kevin Owens re-signed about a month ago, and Sami Zayn wasn't too far to follow when he tweeted out. Uh, to um, to all of his followers, sticking around and having fun—that's the Sami Zayn way. <laughs> Isn't that what yeah. it's all about, anyways? You know, we 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 sit we sit back here hoping that this person goes here, that that person goes there, but we don't we don't often think about hey, is the performer having fun? Are they enjoying themselves? And we will see more of Sami Zayn this week, um, of course, on SmackDown, uh, where it does look like he's having the fucking time of his life. Uh, but I have to say, Sami Zayn, you are the brand new Tweet of the Week champion, now four-time Tweet of the Week champion. Hey, he's sneaking his way up there, kind of halfway to that Randy Orton, CM Punk uh Plateau. <laughs> the illust- yeah, the illustrious level. Uh, I wonder who our first, um, I mean, you know, CM Punk and the Rand Man certainly have the numbers on their side right now, but I'm curious who's going to hit that Ric Flair, uh, the Ric <laughs> Flair number first. Uh, that's the magic number. Who knows? All it takes is one big controversy and a couple hot tweets in a that's row. That's all it takes. One controversy <laughs> and a couple hot tweets in a row to make the list. So congratulations to Sami Zayn. You are our uh, tweet of uh, tweet of the week champion. So let's move over uh, let's move over to your show then, shall we? Because of course if we're talking Sami Zayn, uh, you know that we are talking about SmackDown Live. Okay folks, it's Friday night. It's time for SmackDown Live. It, uh, it used to be on Tuesday, but then... Uh, I think it was on Friday before, though. No, no, wait. We used to film it on a Thursday and then release it. It's just SmackDown Live. That's right. You also know we're talking about the bloodline. So the Usos come out, uh, cut a little promo, putting the group over, and introduce Roman Reigns. And they just kind of play a highlight reel of his uh, universal title reign, which is up to 508 days uh, right now, which is now the officially the longest reign. In the belt's history, passing Brock Lesnar's uh, 504 days, so and and one of the longest title reigns of the last yeah of fucking the modern era. How long? I mean, you know, CM Punk held that uh, WWE Championship for 434 days, I believe yeah. was the final number. AJ himself had a 300 plus day reign. I think he had a full year uh, reign as his WWE championship, and Roman Reigns continuing to kick all of their asses. 
Yeah, I mean, if he can make it past uh, this Saturday, he's <clears throat> pretty much guaranteed to make it all the way to Mania, so that's another 60 days there or so. But anyways, he gets interrupted by his opponent, uh, Seth freaking Rollins, who... It's officially part of his name now. They're putting it in every graphic. It's yeah, and it's it's in quotations. The (laughs) freaking, and I also like it's not freaking. I should say, Uh, (laughs) apostrophe. uh, Well, we've we yeah we've dropped the G uh, for Seth freaking Rollins, which is funny because then you have to put like. I, I think that would mean you would have to put a double apostrophe around the word, but then a single apostrophe after the N for the G. So it would be like two apostrophes, frick it, three apostrophes. Yeah. Uh, we'll... And, his, <laughs> and his, since his last name ends in an S, if you're trying to, you have to put an apostrophe. It's like Seth Rollins. Like is... if it was something possessive, <laughs> Seth freaking Rollins is. Yeah. Oh my God, this, this guy, this guy's getting confused. And who's back there uh, writing these, uh, writing these things out, by the way? Is Fit Finley in charge of, uh, is he the grammar police back there in Gorilla? I don't know. Yeah, who does uh, did Seth pitch this, or did someone else assign it to because him? Because like, also, I, I think the freaking thing has been around for a little while now. Yeah, it was just kind of part of what he'd say. He'd get hyped up and be like, "I'm Seth freaking Rollins." <laughs> it was more of but, yeah, it was more of like a <laughs> yeah. He was just hyping him. <laughs> but anyways, he's out here. Uh, he hypes himself up. Uh, I don't know. I guess he's kind of the baby face in this feud, but not officially. Um, I don't know. We're having a lot of heel on heel lately in WWE. But anyways, doesn't matter. Seth says Roman can't get the job done without the Usos. So Roman comes out. He says, I give you my word. Uh, They won't interfere. And Seth says, well, how about this? I'll find a partner tonight. I'll face the Usos. If I win, they're barred from ringside. Um, And then if they beat me. I lose my title shot or something like that. Yeah, something so. like that. Great, uh, uh, which is, uh, you know, setting up our great main event also um, with that kind of, hey, if we want to see Seth and Roman go at it, we want to see Seth and Roman go at it. We don't want yeah. any of this shit thrown in there. And uh, Rollins reveals his partner, uh, his best friend, Kevin Owens, who, um Yeah. Uh, like you said, you're keeping track. That's another quarterly invite. There, oh, we're Owens. keeping track, baby. <laughs> uh, Kevin Owens burning one quick, uh, burning it down faster than Seth frickin' Rollins could. And Seth Rollins using his third with a presumed, I mean, I'd say, you know, to build up the match, a presumed fourth uh, tomorrow. Uh, P- possibly. Yeah, if he shows up, which, you know, probably would, building up to the match. Yeah, he probably will. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I think at one point, too, that uh, Seth Rollins, when referring to Dean Ambrose, called him Mox, which I don't think they've ever said on WWE. Now, there were two Mox, uh, there were two Moxleys on this, uh, on this, uh, show. Of course, Seth and Roman, you know, Seth was talking about their Shield days, and he had mentioned, uh, he said, you, me, and Mox, and that got a little pop from the crowd right there. Uh, ultimate sign of respect to the man is John. The man is John Moxley. Dean yeah, Ambrose no, I mean, had I... a run in WWE, but the man, uh, <laughs> the man, the father, the husband, that man is John Moxley. Um, yeah. And then later on, uh, Pat McAfee also said Moxley. Yeah. So it must be. It's a purpose. It's canon. It's canon, it folks. Just a sl- yeah. Uh, so let's go right on. Mad Cat Moss taking on Kofi Kingston. Uh, but Big E makes a surprise appearance oh, here. Oh, baby, we're <laughs> burning all over the place tonight. Yeah, so, uh, he's uh, ringside to keep Corbin at bay, and, yeah, of course, those two start fighting. Back in the ring, Mad Cap hits the ropes. Kofi hits him with Trouble in Paradise. Get the win. Finally, after, uh, you know, the past couple of weeks... New Day hasn't yeah. been looking too hot, especially with uh, uh, Xavier Woods out for a little bit. Yeah, if, uh, yeah, loss here would have been real bad for Kofi, especially to Madcap. Yeah, and it's uh, I think after the match, um, Corbin was there at one point. Yeah, with his hat and his shorts. <laughs> with with with, it, with his hat and his shorts, and it was crazy. Uh, this was actually a segment where I thought to myself, in this ring. 
There are four men, two former WWE champions, and a former U.S. champion. Money in the Bank winner. Two Money in the Bank winners. <laughs> uh, and which didn't seem as like as if like their accolades did not reflect kind of what's happening with any of these performers at all right now. Yeah, I mean, this whole thing was pretty meaningless. You know, how <laughs> it is pretty rare that you're going to have two WWE champions in kind of like a shitty after the opening promo type of type of mid match that maybe lasted you know seven eight minutes maybe. Yeah. But for me, that's everything with Corbin and Madcap. It's just going to be a shitty little whatever, Uh, unfortunately. A little whatever. That's exactly it. Yeah. (laughs) Well, let's move along because we got Aaliyah versus Natalia. The little rematch right after that record-breaking performance from the week before uh, by Aaliyah. And we had former WWE star Summer Rae watching that ringside. Don't know if if you know who she is at all, but... Uh, yeah, looking a little different than when we last saw her, but yeah, little cheer for her though. Some of the crowd recognized her. Yeah, I don't think I recognized her, um, at all. Yeah, she was kind of like the early days of NXT. She kind of helped Sasha form her boss character, and then she was Fandango's manager for a bit, so nothing too crazy. Okay, okay. Whatever. See what she can do in the rumble time. Uh, Anyways, back in the ring, Aaliyah's doing pretty good. She hits this uh, cool move where she does like a handstand on the top ropes and then flips forward into a Hurricane Rana. So, cool little thing there. And Natalia fights back, gets Aaliyah in the corner, starts stomping away. And she won't break at the ref's count, so uh, disqualification. (laughs) Excuse me. Big DQ and another week of uh, Aaliyah looking very lucky. Uh, is she coming off because she? I guess she had that quick what the three second win the Guinness. I mean that's a world record in WWE. We huh? think three point one seven seconds is what uh, is what the I think is what the official number is that I could find. Yeah, <clears throat> but yeah, another win here for her. Natalia freaks out afterwards, beats her up until Zia Lee comes out. And uh, just kind of kicks Natalia in the gut, sends her packing. <laughs> so hopefully we'll finally see some more of Zaya. She's only like shown up twice, and then yeah, I don't know. I just want to see her wrestle. Yeah, maybe to a, a Zaya Lee Natalia feud. Maybe that's the uh, the goal. I mean, yeah, that's a good. Uh, I mean, Natalia, she's the gatekeeper. Good first feud to have. The match will be fine. Yeah. But. Anyways, uh, Viking Raiders take on Los Lotharios. Kind of a throwaway match, but, you know, crowd likes the Vikings. They put on a good performance, get the win. So, nothing to it. Yeah, because I think out of out, out of everybody involved in the uh, in the SmackDown tag world, uh, I think uh, the Vikings have to be the ones, like, closest to possibly dethrone the Usos, who themselves are sitting on a uh, a a uh, record championship reign, a record reign, or, what, or like Smackdown a tech? yeah, yeah. I think they the SmackDown titles the longest, yeah. one hundred ninety ish days probably by now. Yeah, got to be pretty up there, but yeah, uh, the Viking. I mean, the New Day didn't get it done, so maybe the Viking Raiders will be that team. Who knows? Yeah, did did but the Viking did the Viking up. Raiders? Ever hold, they won the Raw Tag Team Champs I, at one point? Maybe. Maybe. I I, I, they were the NXT Tag Champs, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And probably the Raw Champs, but who knows? Yeah, it's so hard to say, because anyway. yeah, one of them got hurt, or one of them had a kid. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, one of them did get hurt and missed like a year. Something um, like that, yeah. Yeah. Anyways... Let me check this. Uh, yeah, one-time Raw Tag Champ. One-time NXT Tag Champ. One time. There you go. And one of them was a 24-7 champ, Eric. Eric! Way to go, Eric. <laughs> that must have been while well, Ivar was hurt. Yeah. Uh, anyways, we got uh, Naomi taking on Charlotte Flair in a championship contenders match. But before the bell can even ring, Sonya Deville comes out, makes the referee take off his shirt. She puts it on herself. So 
She's now the special guest ref right there. Uh, Charlotte, she's in control of the match, looking for the figure four. But Naomi just kicks her right into Sonya, which knocks DeVille to the floor. Uh, meanwhile, Naomi hits Charlotte with the rear view, makes the cover. You could count to six, but Sonya's still on the floor, not making the count. So uh, she slowly gets up. Naomi's screaming at her. And Charlotte nails Naomi from behind, locks in the figure four. And then Sonya runs in, calls for the bell like Earl Hebner in the Montreal screw job. Naomi didn't even tap out. This was the Nashville screw job. Uh, yeah, so that's just more shit from Sonya. Which has been a feud running since September for all those uh, keeping keeping score. Yeah, one of the longest going feuds in Honestly, uh, all... one of the longest going feuds and in classic Vince style. Um, you know, if two people are feuding, they can't touch each other. Classic Vince. Uh, and this has been going since September. They haven't touched each other in four and a half months now. Yeah. And then I think a bit after we go backstage where Eric Bischoff is there uh, talking to Pierce when Sonya shows up and Pierce just tells her that she's way overstepped her bounds with Naomi. And uh, Eric and I were talking. We think it's affecting your leadership ability. So I'm going to suggest to upper management that you and Naomi have a one-on-one -on -one match next week. Next week. So hopefully it happens. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's tomorrow. Or it's the end. Yeah, I would think, you know, because I would worry that another two months uh, at Mania would be too late. Yeah, I mean, maybe she weasels her way out on SmackDown and then they book it on the pre-show for Royal Rumble. I don't know. I mean, you would hope not, though, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> and I, you know, of course, because you want to build the big matches for the big show. Uh, not the big show, but you want to build the big matches for the big show. I get it. However, we have seen the success of, like, Page Hangman 2 just on a fucking Wednesday. We've seen how that model can kind of work and previous NXT things with War Games, you know, that's kind of like their weekly television program. Uh, but the main roster really, really stays away from that. Really stays away from having those big <laughs> moments on free TV. Yeah. Who knows? We'll have to tune in to find out. Yeah, different get... strokes, I guess. Uh, then we get that newly signed Tweet of the Week champion, Sami Zayn, coming out uh, for some more Jackass-related stuff. He wants to recreate the famous self-defense skit. Uh, so he's got table full of weapons, you know, the cattle prod, pepper spray, uh, a couple other dangerous items there. And, uh, he starts off with the cattle prod, uh, puts it on his leg, and this cheesy zapping sound effects plays over the PA, and he pretends it hurts, and uh, we all can tell this is not real, but he ups the voltage, puts it against his chest, and, uh, just more fake zapping until the jackass himself, Johnny Knoxville, comes out. And, uh, gets a big reaction here. People are chanting Johnny. I guess they are in Tennessee. That's is that his home state? Uh, uh well, I think Knoxville, <laughs> Ten Knoxville, Knoxville, Tennessee <laughs> is a place. I think. Yeah, is that how he got named? I I, I wonder. Is Johnny Knoxville? Is Knoxville even his? No, his real name is not even Johnny. <laughs> yeah, but he was born in Knoxville, <laughs> Tennessee. So there you have it. So there you go. Uh, either way, people are loving him, chanting for Johnny and. He tells Sammy, he says, I know these weapons, but something seems off. Something seems off here. Let me see that cattle prod. He grabs it. And he says, okay, it's legit, but uh, someone forgot to turn it on. I fixed that for you, Sammy boy. And uh, then he zaps Sammy, and then an even worse sound effects plays. And uh, But apparently, this was supposed to be a real shock. So this is Sammy falls down and sells it. Uh, <laughs> well, presumably there, wasn't, presumably, there wasn't much to sell. I mean, they used a real cattle prod when Scott Hall uh, zapped Goldberg to cost him his big win streak. So they should have just they, done They it. really yeah. cattle prodded Goldberg? Yeah. Wow. I mean, I don't know what the voltage was, but they just went... I mean, either way, it, I feel like it's going to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to hurt, but hey, that's how Kevin Nash beat the streak. Uh, but anyway, so Sammy gets zapped. Johnny, nah, he dumps him over the ropes once again. So he's two for two. Uh, practicing for the rumble here. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully there's a bit of a you know uh, a bit of a spot for him more than just the 
And I would like to see more than just the actor comedy spot. Yeah, hopefully some sort of I guess the real question payoff. is, is Johnny Knoxville going to actually eliminate Sami Zayn from the Rumble? I don't know. And will there be any other jackass uh, cameos? Is Pawnee, Pony- yeah, Pawnius. Uh, we got a wee man, Preston yeah. Lacey. Dave England. Dave England. Ryan yeah. McKegney. Any of any of these guys <laughs> would love it if they showed up. Not Steve-O, though. He's too big league now. He wouldn't do it. Steve-O. Steve-O could show He's up. There's also league. a whole uh, cast of, like, new guys. Um, yeah, that I've seen in the, that I've seen in the trailer. So any one of these new guys could show up. The one guy almost had his hand bitten off by a shark. Really crazy. Jesus. Well, I no, did. no spoilers. It, no, this was for this was like a pre. They did Jackass Shark Week last year on Discovery Channel. Oh, okay. And he tried to jump. They literally tried to jump sharks. He was like wakeboarding and he landed, and then one of the sharks attacked, and his hand was like hanging off. Crazy. Wow. Blood everywhere. Jesus. Yeah, it was crazy. Hopefully they'll show a clip in the movie. <laughs> Hopefully. Anyways. Jackass forever, folks. So they can introduce, like, this guy's name's Poopies, but he's pretty cool. Trust us. Poopies. Yeah. Anyways, we're giving them too much publicity. We'll see ads for it on Saturday. Uh, but let's go to Ricochet versus Seamus. I feel like these two have fought a lot. Um, well, I guess they're feuding over Ridge Holland's nose, so. <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah, so anyways, it was fine. Wrestling was good. Uh, Ricochet was in control until he goes for a suicide dive, but Sheamus catches him midair with a big knee to the face, and then shortly after hits the brogue kick to get the win. Yeah, given that squash vibe, uh, just yesterday I was cooking up some dinner, cruising through YouTube, and WWE had put on the... uh, um, the Adam Cole Ricochet match from one of the takeovers for the North American Championship, one that Ricochet ends up winning, and then he goes home with the uh, North American Championship. This bit is huge, huge difference between yeah. that Ricochet and then you know like main <laughs> main roster Ricochet guy was so over. Everything he did was gold, uh, and now he gets squashed. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it's too bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go to this main event, though. We got the Usos taking on Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens. As we mentioned, if the Usos lose, they're barred from ringside. If they win, Seth loses the title shot. So, uh, something to fight for here. And, yeah, match was good. Pretty standard main event tag team stuff going on. But, uh, yeah, everyone has time to shine. Rollins, he gets the hot tag, starts going on a roll. And, the fans, they were loving him. They were singing his theme song, the whole... I don't even know the, the tune to carry it with, but uh, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking they were about. Singing. <laughs> Eventually, the whole match, it all breaks down. Kevin Owens takes out Jay with a stunner. Rollins hits Jimmy with a curb stomp. But then Roman comes flying in out of nowhere with a Superman punch to cause the DQ. But Seth still gets the win, so Usos are banned from ringside. Yeah, I guess, yeah, d- regardless of the DQ, I guess that uh, that keeps them banned anyways. Yeah, so deal with it. Yeah, you got to deal with it <laughs> as much as you can. Uh, and yeah, and like you said, you know, that was the end of the show. I think, uh, did you mention, I think we saw Jeff Jarrett on this one? <laughs> yeah, I forget what he was even doing. Uh, I, I, neither do I. He was backstage... He had a cowboy hat on, I think. Uh, I think he was, yeah, he was chatting with uh, Boogs, Boogs and Shinsuke. Um, oh, okay. and he yeah, was he's like, like oh, you know, I used to play a little guitar. Yeah, there, he was talking about his guitar <laughs> playing, um, which is uh, funny, which is crazy. So this happened on Friday, and then uh, GCW had a uh, had a pay per view on Sunday, of which Jeff Jarrett was a part of. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's a free agent, baby. He can do what he wants. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, how much do you think he got paid for that? <laughs> I have no idea. I, like, I have no idea kind of what the going rate is. So let's say Jeff Jarrett is somewhere. They fly him out. And then how much do you get paid for it? You know, a thousand. Do you think a thousand dollars is too much? No, I'd say at least he'd probably get a thousand bucks. Probably that. about a thousand dollars. Plus, we'll fly you like we'll handle your uh, accommodations or your travel. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it does raise a good question. I, I there's not. I, I wonder. I do wonder sometimes how much these legends get. Yeah, 
I mean, especially these there guys, was really no value. Not, in not like him the there. Stone Colds or the guy who are on guys who are kind of on these legends deals, where it's like, hey, fifty grand a year, and you show up when we tell you to show up. Uh, short <laughs> of those guys, yeah. I am often curious. Yeah, I mean, do you think who do you think paid him more, GCW or WWE? <sighs> like, I would almost <laughs> want to say GCW. I was watching some of the highlights from that show. That, play, yeah, that play, maybe, that, I mean, they need them more. And I, I and I was watching some of the highlights from that show on the Sunday. There, that place was fucking packed. Even if they charged fifty a head, uh, that place was fucking busy. Um, so there's a chance. There's a chance he could have made a good chunk of cash. Well, he's still out there. He's working. Double yeah. J. Double J, uh, baby, still working. <laughs> so that was our SmackDown. So let's cruise on over to our other Friday night show uh, live. This shit's not pre-taped, baby. Of course, we're talking about All Elite Wrestling Rampage. 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 Live on TNT, big news, Moxley's first match back uh, since his return just a few days before. And of course, he receives the hero's welcome as he enters the ring to take on All Ego uh, and good Canadian kid, Ethan Page. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Moxley looking as good as ever though, just great shape, slimmed down a little bit there, but uh, yeah. All ego page. He's here to put up a fight and does pretty well in there against Moxley. But we all know the deal. Moxley's not losing this first one back. And uh, he locks in that bulldog choke and chokes Page out. So it gets the win. And uh, on his way back up the ramp, Brian Danielson comes out to give him some applause. And uh, we all know they have unfinished business there. They were supposed to fight each other in the finals of that Eliminator tournament. So. I think that's a match we all look forward to watching. Yes, I think I actually f had forgotten about. Uh, I think I actually had forgotten about that. Um, Danielson ended up taking up Miro, um, filling in for that position. I totally forgot about that. Huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, Brian. He said, "Okay, I'll just have a great match with everyone else in the meantime." <laughs> and and we Thanks. haven't seen Brian Danielson since, uh, or rather, he hasn't been in competition. Or may I think not at all. I think this was his first kind of appearance since. Yeah. Since that big uh, rematch. Uh, yeah, hey, uh, on the page First two. Loss. Yeah. Yeah. Have we even seen Hangman much since then? Definitely not in a match. Not real. Definitely not in a match. I think he had a promo uh, last Dynamite, or I guess the Dynamite that was uh, like the week before this, or like two days before this show. Yeah. Um, of course, because it looks like Lance Archer is going to be his new. Uh, competitor. Very odd, though. You think they would kind of keep him on TV as the. The momentum's there. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of odd, but I don't know. Well, we'll cover this week's Dynamite just shortly. Uh, we go to Nick Jackson taking on Trent Beretta here. Uh, so a nice singles action for the tag team specialists. And a good evenly fought match here. And Nick, he goes for a, a dive over the top rope, but slips up. Comes up a bit short at one point. Looked a little scary there, but everyone appears okay. Uh, yeah, Trent, he hits a big pile driver for a near fall. And soon after this, Nick, he hits a big swanton bomb right onto the ramp. And then a 450 splash into the ring. But Trent kicks out of that. And then Trent just goes on a roll. Hits Nick with a string theory. He gets the three. Huge win for Trent Beretta. Yeah. And, and, and what many might even call an upset victory. Oh, yeah. I would. I mean, I, yeah, I think I would. Yeah, and Trent, Trent's looked great uh, since coming back. He was out for a little while. I think it was a shoulder thing or a peck thing. Um, and ringside shenanigans kept to a minimum for the majority yeah. of the uh, of the match. Of course, these are both or teams where we got Cutler, we got Matt Jackson, Orange Cassidy, Wheeler Uta. There, there's all sorts of. Uh, there's all sorts of guys um, coming up on both sides of this. Yeah. <clears throat> but we'll see where this leads. But, yeah, definitely a big win for Trent. Mm -hmm. 
Then we go to everyone's new favorite star, Hook, taking on Serpentico. And Hook, once again, just getting a huge hero's welcome from the crowd. And uh, once again, another just dominant performance. He's just tossing Serpentico all around. These huge suplexes. Locks in the big sleeper hold. Gets the win. Uh, Hook? Yeah, and then... Sorry, go on. No, yeah. Then there's just a quick little QT Marshall comes out to talk some trash. So Hooks suplexes him on the stage. Yeah, this is uh. So the hook, the hook experiment. Hook is and uh, now I gotta say we are three weeks into uh, the 2022 shooty uh, qualifiers. Um, yeah. But Hook is quickly making his uh, his case made known for many shooty awards. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh... Uh, but most importantly, or you know, the biggest one to me that comes not 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 just the rookie of the year, which he is definitely making himself a case for. He's making himself a case for most over. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just like a unanimous cheer uh, for all these ra- for all these all elite wrestling uh, crowds every time he comes out. I don't know how they're doing. I don't know why. I still haven't figured it well, out. But they. I mean, it is part. Like part of it, it, he is really good, but part of it is also like a meme that's caught on that like everyone's just all in on it. Yeah, it's it's not only was he he was there, you know, and maybe the way maybe just the way he's been booked. Like, hey, we're gonna put you on TV, and you're not gonna talk for a year, and then you're gonna debut, and it's gonna go quick, and then he still hasn't had a match I think longer than three minutes. Uh, he no. is still pretty much just squashing people. Um, but yeah, it's the social media la, <clears throat> send hook, his online popularity, his hair. I don't know what it is, but something <laughs> about hook clicking. is clicking and, with everybody. <laughs> and even the way he squashes, like he's doing some good wrestling. It's not like big power man just throw you around a well, little bit. Well, and that's he's what I think it technical. is. We we don't often see squash matches by, and like I say this kind of in quotations, but like sm- like little guys. Yeah. And he is like I mean, I'm compared sure. to some other guys, he is pretty small. Oh, I'm sure like, he's six feet tall, 175 pounds. Like I'm sure he <laughs> has size to him. However, when you think squash, yeah, you think of you think of a Wardlow, you think of yeah. Sheamus over Ricochet, you think of that kind of David and Goliath. But Hook is Go- Hook is David. Hook's <laughs> yeah. never Hook yeah. will never be a Goliath. No, he's Rocky. He's got the He's shorts. Rocky. The shorts. He's got the shorts. <laughs> uh, but let's go to this episode's main event. We got Jade Cargill defending that TBS title against Anna Jay. First ever title defense here. And uh, yeah, Anna puts up a good fight. She's got the crowd cheering for her, but Jade overpowers her. And uh, yeah, you know, she's cocky. She's doing push ups middle of the match, but Anna has her little comeback. So Mark Sterling. Jumps up on the apron, causing a distraction. Uh, so John Silver takes him out, hits a brain buster on the floor. Back in the ring, Cargill goes for the Jaded. Anna rolls through. She gets the Queen Slayer submission locked in, but Jade's able to escape. And then she hits the Chingola bomb, and then the Jaded to get the win, retain her TBS title. In, like you said, the actual first uh, defense of this title. Yeah. And she's now got a nice round twenty-five and zero record here in AEW. Ah, uh, you love seeing it. You love seeing a nice, a nice, a nice number. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's only going to go up, and uh, who's going to be the one to end the streak? Yeah, well, I mean the streak will probably come with the the title loss. Yeah, I would think so. Um, kind of a double whammy there. But who knows? I mean, that's the good thing now. But having two titles, she can kind of have a long, dominant reign for a bit, and you can still have this other title, so it doesn't stranglehold the division or anything. Yeah, we have we have people can now actually compete for a couple things if they want it. Yeah, and I think we said eventually they'll probably have tag titles introduced. Now that we're getting, you know, a bunch of groups, you got like Rebel and Jamie and. Anna and Ty Conti and all these other different Exactly, yeah, we've talked about too. He's an, an uh, a junior heavyweight type of type of deal also. 
Um, yeah. Women's tag. That could be titles. Hook's prize. Hook coming for that <laughs> junior, junior heavyweight. Coming for that junior heavyweight hook. <laughs> Uh, yeah. which was great stuff. Uh, great stuff to cl- uh, to close off um, that edition of Rampage. Let's make our way through the weekend. Uh, yeah, GCW had that pay per view. Moxley retained that championship still. Uh, yeah. And the crazy. Did you see the crazy spot? Uh, it was six man, six man tag. Yeah, so six man tag, and then they build up this thing where it's like two stacks of three with the other ones like sitting on each other's shoulders. <laughs> okay, so like fine. one guy standing on the bottom, or like two guys standing at the bottom, and then they each have two people kind of sitting on their shoulders. And then the <laughs> top guy, I, I couldn't even tell you the name of these guys. Uh, the top guys give, uh, a dis- like the top guy jumps off one and then gives a destroyer to the other top guy. <laughs> it was just one of those like whoo type of moments. Uh, yeah. You're like, how does the science work there? Uh, but we <laughs> we roll our way through uh, that GCW pay per view and uh, on to Monday. So let's get into uh, this week's edition of Monday Night Raw. Let's get raw. <laughs> Yeah, we start off with Adam Pierce and Corey Graves in the ring. Corey Graves hasn't stepped in the ring in a long, long time. Yeah, he's not an official, uh, so I don't know why he's there, but uh, we're having the official weigh-in between Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar, so both men come out. Uh, we got the scale in the ring. They did the smart thing. They didn't do what AEW did with that, like, you know, the little moving metal sliding the scale classic a- the classic scale <laughs> with the metal yeah they've got like a carnival scale you stand on it the little needle moves that thing that yeah that weight. thing a little better a little quicker <laughs> a little better uh but what's even better is brock lesnar coming out rocking the cowboy hat <laughs> and the big old belt buckle there he's uh yeah it was a good every look. week it was just- a good look for him he had the jean jacket with uh with um it kind of looked like sheep skin sheep wool <laughs> on the inside, keeping him yeah, warm. On the inside. Uh, yeah. Which uh, my old roommate has the exact same jacket. You can get it at the Gap. Uh, <laughs> so it's nice to see that you know wrestlers—they're just like the us. Exact same. You think his is from the Gap? I don't know. I've I have seen a, I have seen this jacket before at the Gap. That's yeah. all. That's all. I don't know. He might have to have a. May not come in his size. <laughs> yeah, he has to. Extra. He has to undo the stitching and then re-stitch it up around his form. Yeah. Uh, anyways, he's looking great here. Uh, Corey tells Brock, though, I don't think that's appropriate attire for a weigh-in. So Brock's like, oh, you want me to get naked for you, Corey? So he's he's having fun. He's playing around. (laughs) Uh, Bobby Lashley's not playing around, though. He steps right onto the scale. 273 pounds of almighty beef. Uh, Now that's a lot of beef. (laughs) So MVP just cuts a promo, putting him over, saying, yeah, guess what? He's going to gain a bit of weight at the Rumble when he wins that WWE title. So uh, up next, Brock Lesnar takes off his hat, steps onto the scale, comes in at 286 pounds. So 13 pound advantage advantage over Lashley there. And uh, they end up exchanging words. Brock calls him Bobby who and walks off. So a weigh, weigh-ins fall flat for me every single time, especially when there is no weight class um (laughs) you know where in a ufc world the heavyweight fighters uh like 250 pounds that's the weight you gotta fucking get under right there's there so there was no like point the whole thing uh where you know i feel like a contracts like where the contract signing this is where these these things kind of you know make it Right, we want to see the contract signing. We want to see somebody go through that table with that little black scrim on it. <laughs> uh, the promos were fine, but yeah, really did nothing for the feud. Yeah, no. Nope. <laughs> I mean, we're getting <laughs> the match either much. way, so it doesn't matter what we're saying <laughs> yeah. about it. They just wanted to delay one more week without having any contact between the two of them, so they flew in a big scale. <laughs> they had to fly it in express order. Yeah. 
Uh, but let's go to some in-ring action. Bianca Belair taking on Queen Zelina. And uh, I thought this ended up being a pretty good match. Maybe one of Selena's best of her singles career. But, uh, I mean, you're in there against the EST, so you got a great opponent. Um, but, yeah, you know, Belair doing her thing, lifting Zelina above her head with ease. But Vega fires back. She goes on a good little run. She looks to hit the code red. But Belair counters, picks her up into the KOD to get the win. But, no, I thought Selena looked good here. I thought this was a fun little match. Yeah, well, that's what it was. I feel this was a uh, used their time wisely type of match. Yeah, uh, it, it wasn't was, like a 20-minute barn burner, but... Of course, did their sub, thing and- sub four minutes... Um, Carmella wasn't there at all, uh, and I, I wasn't, we weren't told why. Uh, of course, remember, uh, Zelina Vega and Carmella are the, uh, are the, are the tag champions. Yeah, I think we see Carmella later. Maybe not. I can't remember. Uh, maybe. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see her in a little bit. Okay, but yeah, certainly she wasn't a part of this, uh, you know, you think coming out with your tag partner, yeah. that's, that's 101 in my mind. I mean, maybe she's just getting her gear on, getting ready for her match later. That could be it, know. getting your gear on. Finding her mask, getting her mask all bedazzled. Mm-hmm. Anyways, we've got a United States Championship match. Damian Priest defending against Kevin Owens. Uh, last week, Owens was the first man to beat Priest in singles competition. So uh, that earned him the title shot here. And uh, looking to make it two weeks in a row. Uh, yeah, some big moves. He hits a swanton bomb on the floor, off the apron, but Priest gets the knees up, choke slams Owens onto the apron, and then back in the ring, Owens hits a tornado DDT, and then a frog splash for a big near fall. But then Damien, once again, just gets unleashed and goes crazy. Uh, he's beating on Owens in the corner. He won't break at the ref's count, so he's disqualified. Just He's racking up the losses now. He's making bad decisions here. Racking them up. Uh, yeah, this is one of those classic everything was great until the DQ. Uh, yeah. and which we do, which we do see a lot of here on the main roster where it's everything's fantastic. Uh, mm-hmm. until for some reason someone gets, uh, disqualified. Uh, you know, the feud is not over. You know, we could, uh, we could get the match as early as the Royal Rumble. We could get this rematch. Um, or something on a uh, normal kind of like weekly television, uh, hard to say, but all signs are kind of pointing towards Kevin Owens being the new uni- uh, United States champion at one point. Yeah. I mean, uh, they're probably going to have to do one of those steps as well, where priest, if you get DQ'd, you lose the title. And at this point, he's stupid enough. He just might do it. He can't control himself. Now, that's interesting because, I've, well, of course, we've heard of no disqualifications. But now, this is kind of the opposite. It's the, if there is a disqualification. Yeah. You uh, Has uh, has that ever happened? It's, it's been done. A reverse Woo-hoo-hoo. step. <laughs> it's all been done. Woo-hoo-hoo. Uh, <laughs> and I think it's even happened where, like, the person broke the step and lost their title. But, I don't know. We'll get to that if it happens. But uh, Oh, yeah. Like one know. of those uh, bang the chair on the ground, throw the chair <laughs> to the other person, you fall over. One of those classic. Uh, well, there was even Dolph Ziggler uh, won the world title because Edge was banned from using the spear. And then he used the spear. So... Ziggler won the world title. Really? Okay, yeah. Okay, that sounds fun. But they didn't, but they, but they presented it to him like the next week, because at the time, I guess the ref didn't see it or something. Right. So but they held the, it. They the, held it. They the, held their own. The officials <laughs> needed to review and all those, all yeah. those kinds of things. So it was fun. Uh, then we get that tag match. I promised you, Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan, Dana Brooke taking on Nikki Ash, Carmella, and Tamina. But uh, nothing crazy at all here. Just a tune-up for the Rumble. Staying ring-ready. Uh, yeah, eventually Rhea Ripley locks in that... I forget what she calls it. It's like the reverse... Uh, the cool clover leaf submission thing she does. Carmella taps out. Yeah, reverse clover leaf, leaf is probably fair. <laughs> um, yeah. Getting the... Uh, getting, getting the win for uh, the 24-7... 
champion, uh, I guess. <laughs> what, what, what is your, yeah, so I well, guess this, this was where I thought was weird because I thought I didn't understand the breakup of the Carmella Queen Zelina thing. I, I guess they just. And then we also I saw, like, I thought Nikki Ash was babyface 100%. Even well, though, yeah, here she attacked Rhea Ripley from behind after the match, and then she runs off. So, right, which is a weird way to pull it, because you think if you were to look at the two of them, which which one of them would be more appealing to young girls in the audience? A hundred, you would a hundred percent go Nikki Ash. You can see uh, parents. Well, I'd much rather them my daughter be like her than the woman with tattoos and haircut <laughs> and fucking spacers and this that the other. Uh, so I had well, no, I had no clue who to cheer for uh, in this one. But hey, at least we got two women's matches on the show. Yeah, uh, but I mean, hey, Rhea Ripley, it's 2022. We're gonna start having more mothers that look like her in this day. And That's show. a good point. That is a good point. <laughs> but uh, we got to go on here because we've got an academic challenge uh, presented by Alpha Academy. So Gable and Otis taking on Randy, Orton, and Riddle. The first round of the academic challenge, we're having a, a traditional spelling bee. So uh, you, we all know the rules here. Uh, we got everyone out in the ring. We got a judge. Uh, <laughs> so anyways, we start off the bee with Otis. His word is a mental. Uh, I wasn't quite sure, and neither was Otis, so we get the definition. It's a form of Swiss cheese with the holes in it. So I think we all know that that is now a traditional cartoon. Classic. Uh, anyways, Otis, it's food, so I guess that's why. He's like, oh, food, okay. He spells it perfectly. Uh, a mental. Gets the word correct. So now it's Riddle's turn. His word, calibration. So a bit of an easier word there, but Riddle, he's still unsure as for the definition uh or he says can you put that into letters for me uh no you must spell it so riddle's like oh okay it's like when i calibrate my scale to weigh stuff ounces grams ha 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 marijuana right get it get it because it's <laughs> get it because it's weed and it's yeah maybe they legal. cut to randy and he's like oh smiling like shaking his head like oh riddle maybe marijuana yeah, yeah i feel like Ra <laughs> i feel like randy orton and matt riddle are the like woody harrelson and matthew mcconaughey of the professional wrestling world <laughs> uh where like when the two of them are in the ring somewhere in the world there is a bong not being hit because <laughs> randy and matt riddle are too busy <laughs> yeah uh but Riddle gets the job done. He spells calibration. He spells it perfectly. So, uh, up next, Chad Gable's turn. His word is disillusion. Uh, but Gable, he's so cocky, he asks for the definition, but then cuts the guy off to define it by himself. Uh, and he's so cocky, but he ends up spelling dissolution instead of disillusion. So, very close, but wrong word. Should have listened to the judge. Uh, but I like that. I like that swerve. Gable's pissed off. He says, I spelled it right. You said it wrong. Uh, but we still got to settle this. So, Randy Orton, final word for the win. His word is said to be one of the most commonly misspelled in the English language. The word is dumbbell. But I think any wrestler out there would know how to spell the word dumbbell. Hopefully. And uh, Randy gets it right. The double B did not fool him. RK bro have won round one of the academic challenge. <laughs> uh, the, yeah. Now, now, presumably this is something that's going to have to go on for weeks and weeks. Uh, yeah. Similarly, I think uh, about this time last year or at one point in the COVID-2 era, we had the, uh, v uh, the it, was, it was the Viking Raiders and... Street Profits. Street Profits, yeah, doing their... It was like every week they would play a new sport and it would be like, mini yeah. golf and shit like that so something in this in the same vein uh but in front of crowds which you know hopefully will you know have a, have a little bit of a different take on it yeah and you know i mean this this could have died but they did well the crowd was into it and yeah it wasn't a bad segment it's no not be. at all could have been way worse could have <laughs> been, been way worse way worse uh, and, but i don't uh, think i don't think randy orton and matt riddle they're not they're not really these guys who like they're making lemonade, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 
exactly. Uh, but let's make some more, because Gable's pissed, and he says, Hey, Randy, why don't you fight me one-on-one? -on -one? And we get that. We get treated to a pretty nice match here. Orton, Gable, nice spotlight for Gable here. He got to hang with Orton for over 10 minutes in the ring. Yeah, looks pretty good. He hits that beautiful moonsault for a big near fall and starts working over Randy's leg. But uh, Orton fights back. He hits the draping DDT. Goes for the running punt to the head. But Gable catches his leg right into an ankle lock. Um, so he's got him in trouble here. But outside the ring, Otis starts attacking Riddle. So Riddle picks up his scooter and nails Otis in the back with it. And all this distraction allows Randy to roll Gable into the corner. And then hit the RKO, spiking him down hard. Get the win. But real good showing for Gable here, I thought. You know, whenever you give him a chance, he always looks good. Yeah, I mean, we 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 know him as being a uh, a, a technician. Yeah. Uh, in the ring, but you know, we're it, it, you know matches like this can sort of remind us, like, hey, he can do more. And not only that, Randy Orton can keep up with all these young motherfuckers. I feel like Randy Orton was the oldest in this match by like a decade. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm sure it's probably not. I'm sure, you know, he's closer to, but you know, it's in terms of a, definitely experience. He's been in the company for almost 20 years now. Yeah, and he's still hanging in there with these young pups. So good on him. And uh, at the very end, Riddle announces round two of their challenge. He says, let's go back to gym class. We're having an old-fashioned scooter race. So that should be, that'll be fun. I don't know. Well, that, <laughs> that, uh, the, the question that I had for him is, what school did you go to where scooter uh, race was uh, one of the activities in your physical education class? Yeah, we didn't have scooters, but we had like those little... The little butt carts. The little butt scooters. Little scooters. butt carts, yeah, the four wheels. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> in, in York Region the butt scooters. had the butt scooters. Yeah, those uh, are great. Butt scooters, big parachute <laughs> that you lift up and everyone sits on it, and then yeah. you giggle. Or floor something. hockey. Floor hockey, love classic. Floor hockey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we go to, we get more therapy. Alexa Bliss, the doctor, talking about Lily. That's all there is to say. Yes, I, so just... I, I, I feel as though they are kind of getting away from uh, that gimmick. I feel as though we might be leaving Lily in the dust. I did hear recently uh, that amongst... Well, we already talked about the whole Gunther nonsense last week. Um, but um, it, 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 as a, uh, involved in that uh, trademarking... You know, they tra WWE will trademark a bunch of shit that they're hoping will land. And they recently did re-trademark the goddess... Or they at least they applied hmm. for it, which of course was Alexa Bliss's kind of moniker before this whole Lily nonsense. Uh, so yeah. maybe there's a chance she'll be returning to that sooner rather than later. We'll see. I mean, uh, Charlotte Flair, she's announced herself for the Royal Rumble, and she was the one that destroyed Lily. So maybe that's where Alexa makes her. Oh my return god! And if if Lily eliminates Charlotte. I'm done. The, the podcast well, will, the podcast Lily, will no. be over. I, I, I know, I know Alexa. You, I know you didn't Alexa. say it, but I'm saying it. If okay. Lily okay. eliminates Charlotte Flair, this podcast is done. Well, it's your fault if it happens. You manifested it. I, I know. Put I, it out there. I put it out there in the world, and then it's going to fucking happen. Yeah. Uh, another Vince McMahon, Austin Theory backstage, and uh, theory asks Vince to influence his Royal Rumble number, you know, maybe a 28, a 29. And Vince is just like, no way, God damn it. Uh, go out there, fight AJ Styles. So that's what we get. AJ Styles versus Austin Theory. Another big match for Theory going one-on-one -on -one against, you know, one of the greatest of all time here. And uh, they got a good amount of time. Another, uh, you know, around 15 minutes of back and forth action. Theory looking pretty good again. Pretty good in there. And uh, AJ pulling out some classics. He hits that awesome, the styling moonsault DDT. Doesn't do that too often these days, but always a banger. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, Theory's throwing some big moves at AJ as well, but uh, not going down without a fight. Both men looking to finish it off. Eventually, AJ does. He hits the phenomenal forearm, gets the win. But uh, great showing here by Austin Theory, I think. Yeah, this was this so this was the longest match that we had on the card this week. 
Yeah. And uh, like you said, one of the greatest of all time. AJ Styles is currently performing at a level higher than I would say about 99% of the roster. <laughs> um, somehow. Uh, and you're watching a guy like Austin Theory, and yeah, these two guys in the ring, this these look like two 30-year-olds, two 25-year-olds just rocking at it. How they have the same speed and stamina, pacing. I mean, Jesus Christ, Mike, I feel like you and I could be in a match against AJ Styles, and the match would still turn out pretty damn good. <laughs> uh, you yeah. know, just if, you know, if there's like some, if there's ever some kind of lifetime work award, lifetime achievement, best to be in a match with, AJ Styles is one of those dudes. And uh, like we said earlier, or like we said maybe last week, maybe the week before, 2022 is going to be a great year for Austin Theory. I, we don't know how, but I think when all said all is said and done, 2022 will be a great year for him. Yeah, I mean, if this match is a sign of things to come, it's a very good sign. Yes. Uh, one thing we're still waiting for, uh, we got another preview for Veer Mahan. It's been months now. Nobody's going to care. Nobody probably would have cared anyways. Oh, I love the internet's reaction to this. Uh, a lot of people, <laughs> they've taken that uh, photo of Veer coming soon and they added kind of like that make you look old filter. Uh, so it's his face. Yeah. It's all wrinkly, big gray beard. <laughs> and then the new caption says uh, next week, Veer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and we thought, because there was a point, I remember when Rhea Ripley was coming to the main roster. We were thinking to ourselves like, shit, this has been a long time. Where is she? Uh, and this is putting that to shame. Yeah, I think it's been since like October now. I don't know. Long time for a guy that's probably not going to do much at all when he gets here. So, and uh, remember what happened to Elias's resurrection? Remember when he went to like a? Well, they virtually <laughs> just got rid of that. Yeah, so now he's nothing. They're like, well, we can only have one guitar player, and Rick Boogs is yeah. He he died player. as a little four year old. Uh, <laughs> and we we all remember the uh, the the tombstone, the gravestone yeah. rather. So it was weird. Yeah. Uh, there was a quick little split screen interview between Becky Lynch and Dewdrop, just kind of hyping up the title match and standard stuff, and ends with Dewdrop standing up to go and attack Becky on the other side. So there you go. Okay, okay, we're gonna we're and we're getting that match at the Rumble. Uh, yeah. would have been nice to maybe see Becky Lynch in the flesh before our uh. Our, you know, her before the Rumble. You know, this is our go-home show. Um, would have maybe been nice to see her, but hey, new mom. I get it. You got There's bigger <laughs> shit going on in the world right now. I get it, Becky. Yeah, she'll be there Saturday and ready. Apparently, the kid comes along too, eh? I guess so, in, uh, yeah. Yeah, if, you, if you're checking out, you know, I think my, my wrestler of the week last week, Ryan Satin, his, uh, in his, um... Out of character show with, uh, with Becky Lynch. She had mentioned a few times where she'll be like flat out like nursing the kid, and then it's like Becky five minutes till you're out, and then she'll kind of put the kid down. But okay, and then they're like, hey, you look, make sure she stays asleep. Then Becky will run out, do her promo, do her shit, runs back, and then like the baby's ready to be burped. Like <laughs> this, this kid is in gorilla. Uh, just, you know, with, with, uh, with a kind of like, you know, this little set of those baby headphones, you know, those big baby earmuffs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, apparently, apparently that's what I hear. That's funny. That's funny. Uh, we go to Street Profits taking on the Mysterios and yeah, match was fine. The crowd rooting for both teams here pretty evenly. Got some nice high flying moves, big dives all over the place. Uh, Montez Ford doing like this Superman dive. Yeah, he even did the pose. He like did the, a little pose. He did a pose. Even he knows it. <laughs> Hand now. on hips, arm in the air. Yeah. <laughs> even he knows how so. incredible he is. Yeah. Uh, eventually, it comes down to Ray and Ford. Ford lifts Ray on his shoulders, but Ray counters with a victory roll and gets a three count. Uh, but then afterwards, Dom tries to pull a fast one, sneak up, dump his father over the ropes, but Ray just counters with a head scissors, gets Dominic to the floor. 
Uh, and Dobbs is like, damn it, Dad, you got me again. <laughs> uh, but then the street prophets throw Ray over. Dawkins throws Ford over. And then the dirty dogs show up out of nowhere. They just start throwing people over. So everyone just starts fighting. It's a big brawl. Practice for the rumble. That's yeah, it I guess it's just practice, you know? Just practice for the rumble. Um, that's all. That's all it is, I guess. That's it. Yeah. Uh, we got one more segment. Uh, Miz coming out for Maurice's birthday celebration. So we got the ring. It's all decked out. Gifts everywhere. Family portraits. Cake. Uh, lots of security around the ring, though. Because Miz does not want anything to go wrong. So Maurice comes out. Miz just puts over his beautiful wife. Uh, she opens her first gift, which is a beautifully crafted portrait of her and the Miz just looking like royalty. Prince and princess there. Uh, and she opens her second gift, which is a, a pink sparkly diamond something? A jewelry box? I don't know what this was. Yeah, sure. Let's just say that. <laughs> we'll say that, but uh, ominously sitting in the corner, this giant human-sized gift uh, I think we all are suspicious of. Maurice is excited. She says, oh, Miz, I want that one. I want the big one. And Miz is like, wait a minute. I didn't get you that one. I thought you got that. So security. They call in security. They open the they open the, the gift, which reveals the brick. There's a brick inside, the same one that Maurice Lou used to smash Beth Phoenix in the head with. So they pull the fast one on everyone, laughing. Uh, Miz tries to lead the crowd in a terribly sung rendition of happy birthday until edge and beth come out pissed off and just start laying waste to security beating the shit out of them uh the two of them even hit a 3d at one point everyone's, everyone's hitting the 3d these, the 3D these <laughs> days <laughs> yeah so uh edge picks up one of the security guards power bombs and right through the cake breaking all the rest of the gifts so edge and beth stand tall while ms and mrs are just pissed off at ringside I know we've we've seen this before. This segment went exactly how you would expect it to go. Uh yeah. which was this so this was one of the weirdest go home shows I think I've seen. Um especially before the Royal Rumble, a pay-per-view so or sorry, a premium live event such <laughs> as su as large as this one. Like so we opened and closed with a promo segment, with a segment, not a match. We both yeah. opened and closed with one that weren't particularly good however the in-ring action that was in the middle was all very good was all very yeah. good for the most part it was yeah the wrestling was very good on this show yeah three good matches then why didn't we why didn't we start or end it in the wrestling i can't tell yeah some very weird shit um and let's just and you know all towards the hope the royal rumble really starts off on that road to wrestlemania and i just hope that we you know st start off on the right foot yeah, no, uh, yeah, it was weird ending with the birthday segment because I mean that mixed tag match is probably the fifth or sixth on the card for me of importance, right at the bottom. Uh, so yeah, weird stuff, but all the wrestling was good on this show, and hopefully, I mean that's what the live of premium live events are about is the in ring action. So hopefully, it's a sign of good things to come. And like you said, yeah, that mixed tag bout is actually the only one on the card, if I'm thinking, that doesn't actually have a stake. Uh, of yeah. course, we could get, well, we could might get something added and of course something to the pre-show. Um, but I think everything else has a purpose, short of it really feels like this one is just a reason to keep Edge out of the Rumble. <laughs> yeah, part of it. I you think. know, okay, we need him and, uh, on the Rumble, but not in the Rumble. Okay, what do we do? <laughs> Very bizarre. Yeah, but we'll run down the card at the end of the show there. But that was Monday Night Raw. That was the entirety of Monday Night Raw, our go-home show. Uh, let's take a break. Let's take a break, yeah. and we come back. Of course, we have NXT. Of course, we have this week's edition of Dynamite, and we will go through the Rumble because uh, there's always a little bit. There's always going to be a surprise there. So, folks, you're going to want to stick around, and uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show, folks. Thanks for sticking it out through the break. We're back here with part two of um, 
of the Shoot Brothers. The second half of this, uh, non-Rumble uh, impl- implications. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's still <clears throat> still a chance some of these NXT stars could show up. But Of uh, course, we've seen it before. Uh, you know, Adam Cole was in it once. I think Johnny yeah. Gargano was also in a Rumble once, maybe. We've had a couple, yeah. I think Ciampa, maybe, but... Uh, either way, no real mention of it on this show. They're in their own new little NXT universe. Uh, the, the NXT universe, <laughs> the NXT extended universe, as we all know. Uh, so let's 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 so let's just get into this week's edition. This week's edition of NXT 2.0. NXT. But, oh, what does it mean? But, oh, I don't know, but, but it's but, good oh, wrestling. So oh, NXT. But, oh, Watch and see but, how to tap out a count out but, of one, two, three. So live from the Capitol Wrestling Center. Yeah, we got some Dusty Cup quarterfinal action to start off. MSK taking on Jacket Time. Just a nice fast paced cruiserweight style action here. Uh, you know, crowd kind of rooting for both teams. Uh, they go back and forth. Kushida tries to lock in that hoverboard lock. But MSK Counter hit this cool blockbuster, spinebuster, double team combo, gets them the win, and they advance to the semifinals to face uh, Malik Blade and Andres Anofi. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I yeah, I can't remember what the I don't have the bracket in front of me. I forget what it looks like. It's uh, a small bracket. <laughs> it's a small bracket. Small bracket. Yeah. But one thing about having you know these kinds of tournaments, especially when it comes to 2.0, is that you have to give more time to some of these people uh, to improve. You know the matches that they get to have. Right. Uh, we need to want something to stick around. You know the reward for sticking around. Mm-hmm. MSK has the potential to make every match they have stand out. Um, yeah. However, going against maybe some greener competition you, who don't have what it takes to do a 15-minute match. See, and that's kind of the thing where I feel the uh, – and we'll, we'll probably see more of it in the show, but uh, WWE, they've used their house show model for years, <laughs> right, in an effort to get talent more experience, right? Well, as soon as we say no to this – house show type of thing now we're really relying on all the work that they do in the week leading up to the show and then the actual show and just kind of hope the fans like it yeah and well with the uh yeah the no house shows the no traveling thing we saw the controversy of uh you know people hating on msk for their first year and there's all these rumors there was a small pocket of fans that kind of influenced things and We're kind of seeing a redemption tour for MSK now. The MSK Redemption Tour, baby. (laughs) Yeah, they're getting cheers now. You know, they're one of the favorites to win this tournament, and I think people would be fine with it if they do this time around. So, who knows? Have you? uh, Do we know how tickets work uh, for 2.0? Is it similar uh, to before, where it's like they're kind of handed out? Do you buy Um, them because they still have that Chase U section? I think you go on like a waiting list or something, or maybe I don't know, you sign up, or and then maybe if you're like a regular, you get like advanced. I don't know. Yeah, if it's like somebody uh, in the media or like they have like a preferred list of people or something. Because yeah, that like top left to- corner is still the Chase U corner. So I'd be curious if you were just a person who wanted tickets, and they're like, "Boom, here are your tickets, but you need to wear this Chase U shirt." Yeah. Like if there's kind of like something... an if and or but because I can only imagine that they're probably uh, I, I don't think I've seen any signs at any of these shows. Either. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe so they're they're, and, and and every single person always has a mask on. So clearly there is some kind of policing element to the to the crowd. Yeah, I think it's something that, um, you know, you can't just go and buy a ticket, but you can get in like you just have to. Yeah, the common uh, ma- the common person could get it's in. It's like being in the the what's it called? The Thunderdome. You had to apply and go on their webcam thing. Uh yeah, yeah, okay, something <laughs> similar. Like I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, it's like okay, you can come in but you won't do anything obscene while you're here or something like that. I don't know. Uh anyways, let's move on to some more uh or I guess we got a promo Legato del Fantasma come out and Escobar just runs down Braun Breaker, so Breaker himself comes out to respond and says, yeah, 
Uh, you need all that back up there, the rest of the legato, but I handle my business on my own. So why don't you face me one-on-one, -on -one? just like that? And Escobar says, ah, we do things on my time. When I'm ready, you'll know. So uh, Breaker just takes out his anger on the other guys, beats them up. Okay, okay. You know, uh, you know, promising uh, the challenge next time. Yeah, you know, he's going to defend that title sooner or later. I think they announced the... Uh, uh, what is it called? Vengeance Day. They're bringing yes. that back again this yes. year. Yes, so. Vengeance Day. I think the uh, the fifteenth. I think is the 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 day they called it for. So three weeks from now. Yeah. So that could be a time if you want to do Breaker versus Escobar. Then why not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but before that, we're gonna get Solo Sokoa taking on Boa in a Falls Count Anywhere match. So no DQ, no count out. Boa rocking the face paint. So you know he came to fight and. Uh, solo rocking that nasty burn still. You know, it'd be funny if that makeup just fell off during the match. Just a big chunk. <laughs> Bloop. <laughs> just blooped yeah. down. However, we've stuck at it larger than Randy Orton's uh, burnt face. So you got to give yeah, him. Yeah, we uh, made it two weeks. So. Two, two weeks is one week longer than Randy Orton's <laughs> burned face. Uh, but yeah, like we said, falls count anywhere. So Boa shows up during the entrance, nails Solo with a kendo stick from behind, and beats the shit out of him. His back's going to look like his face after this thing. Mm -hmm. Those kendo shots, but uh, yeah, we get some chairs, suplexes onto a garbage can. Uh, they fight their way backstage at one point. Then they start ramming each other into this uh, the garage door, and that thing gets dented. That's going to, someone's got to fix that. But yeah, eventually they get their way back to ringside. There's a table set up. Uh, Boa gets placed onto the table. Solo climbs to the top rope, hits the big Samoan splash off the top through the boa and the table. Uh, makes the cover right there on the floor. Gets the win. So, nice ending spot. Great ending spot. Uh, a little shame to see Boa take the loss, though, on this one for me. Just because his gimmick is still very new. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, if... And we we literally just saw how Mei Ying collapsed. <laughs> or uh, Tian Sha, you know, the whole thing. We saw how that collapsed. Uh, so it would be nice to see, it, it would have been nice for me to see that, oh, it's not, it, you know, it, it's not the gimmick, it's the performer. Or something like that, right? Where so far, the entire Tian Sha, Mei Ying, Boa thing, everything to do with it has just been loss after loss after failure after loss. Yeah, nothing. Uh, I do like the look of him with the face paint better than just plain Boa. I yep. feel like there's more to it, but. Yeah, another loss here, so we'll see, see oh, where well. it goes. Oh, well. Uh, just like this next match, kind of. Duke Hudson versus Guru Raj. Uh, Guru Raja, or is it? I can't remember. Uh, it doesn't it's matter. It's just Raj. Just Raj? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Either way, Hudson, just vicious once again, destroys him. Hits a big running razor's edge to get the win. And then afterwards, Dante Chen comes out again and challenges Duke, but... Uh, Duke just takes a cheap shot at the the recently recovered knee of Dante and runs off. Yeah, went for the went for the chop block. Yeah, because that's your feud. But uh, some tag action after this. Uh, yeah, six person. We got Toxic Attraction taking on Indy Hartwell, Persia Parada, Kelly Ray. You know, pretty standard six person tag. Everyone getting their licks. Uh, Kaylee hits a nice big flipping senton over the top ropes to the floor, taking out the whole crowd. Um, and kind of throughout the match, Mandy's take, uh, avoiding Kaylee Ray as much as she can. Seems like they're kind of building her as the next challenger, maybe. So uh, Kaylee gets fed up, grabs her bat, just starts stalking Mandy with it. They run off to the back, so now it's just two on two. And uh, Persia Parada hits Gigi with the sit out TKO to get the win. Yeah, she got the pin. Uh, probably like you know the least, probably the least experienced kind of here, or the the one we've seen the least yeah, here in two point oh. It's the one who gets the the pin on this one. Yeah, you know they've been kind of quietly protecting Persia. You know, it's been mostly Indy's fault. Anytime something hasn't gone well, <laughs> it's for them, always so. Indy's fault, of course. Yeah, but. Uh... We move on. More Dusty Cup action here. Grizzled Young Vets taking on Andre Chase and Bodie Hayward. 
making his debut, I think. And uh, like you mentioned, we got that pocket of fans, the Chase U, chanting for them. They're hyped for this. Uh, yeah, outside the ring, the grizzled young vets at one point, they hit this double team move. It looked almost just like a tombstone, but they called it a shoulder breaker. But it looked like a double tombstone. Yeah, I thought the <laughs> tombstone was the like a, just like an off-limits kind of move. I think, I mean, the shoulder breaker, technically, like you go down on one knee, so maybe he did do it, but it looked pretty much exactly the same, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, either way, they did it, but they didn't call it a tombstone, but I thought it was something worth noting there. Uh, but yeah, then Bodie comes in. He goes on a roll. He's got the crowd chanting for him, but Grizzled Young Vets, they cut him off. They hit a double code breaker to get the win. So GYV advanced to the semis to face the Creed Brothers. Did the, uh, who won this last year? Can you recall? MSK won it last year? I think it was MSK. Okay. Okay. Grizzly Young uh, Vets still hanging around, though. You know, we haven't quite hang. seen, we haven't quite seen the, uh, the new younger talent go over. Yeah. Uh, I mean, every, they, every single time. They literally are, as their team says. They're the Grizzled Young Vets. But they're young veterans, <laughs> that, and that's that's oh, it's almost like a little oxymoron there. I mean, they're young, but they're experienced. Yes, you know? yes. <laughs> uh, and then I think at the very end, Von Wagner shows up, beats up the losing team, and he's got Robert Robert Stone at his side, which w- which is surprising. <laughs> There's a few performers in the in in the organization that, despite the rounds and rounds and rounds of releases, are still somehow there. <laughs> um, especially when it comes to, and I'm not talking about the the Sami Zayn types or the Mustafa Ali types who have an incredible amount of talent. Like the people who are just shit on week in, week out, and they're still there. And Robert Stone is that guy for me. I have no clue what he's actually capable of because we only, we almost exclusively only see him getting shit on. Yeah. Uh, and think. you're just like, huh, why is he here still? Like, you know, like, like, Karrion Cross is not, but Robert Stone is. <laughs> How does that make sense? I don't know. I mean, maybe now that there's Vince's influence, he loves the punching bag. He loves the comedy guy. So, yeah, maybe that's who what knows? it is. It's a guy who can just to be fucked with. That's your point. Yeah. He wants at least one of those. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we but, need one uh, guy to Yeah, the Robert, on. the Robert Stone brand itself has very little value. He's done nothing for his clients. So I, I, I wonder know. if Von we. Wagner. I, I wonder if we were to get a list of all of the Robert Stone clients, like how are they all doing? Frank is Frank. Like I, Frankie Monet's the only one I can kind of think of that comes to mind. I mean, Aaliyah was part of it, but she's better off. She's setting records without him. I mean, she she's on the main roster. We didn't see her for a few months, but I guess she is on yeah. the main roster. I think Mercedes, or he was trying to recruit Mercedes. Okay, so other company other company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not good. It's not good. It's not like good. One. Not good. Uh, but let's go do some good, because we got Io Shirai, one of the best there is, taking on Tiffany Stratton, who we still know very little about, other than she's a big daddy's girl. Yeah, I, I don't like the way they phrased that <laughs> um, at all. I, 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 I didn't like that. Uh, well, big test here. I mean, this is only her second match in NXT, and she's got to face EO, so that's a uh, big time going on here. But uh, early on, she's getting the better of EO. Kind of frustrating Shirai a bit, but uh, she takes that frustrating frustration out, unloads on Tiffany, uh, and then hits the, boom, the moon salt to get the win. So... Don't worry, Tiffany didn't win. But, uh... <laughs> well, yeah. So, and, and like I just kind of said a little bit earlier on regarding, you know, the uh, the house show model working with green performers. Like, you put Tiffany Stratton in a match with Io Shirai because this is fucking Io Shirai we're talking about here. You know, she is Io Shirai is like the AJ Styles of the NXT Women's Division, where it's like you can't she she can do a hundred she can do ninety nine percent of the work. And make the match okay. Selling for very awkward offense. <laughs> uh, I'll put this yeah. in. And, you know, the lack of house show things really actually helps me to maybe understand um, the h- how dark and dark elevation actually work. And in my mind, dark and dark elevation are just house shows 
that they put on YouTube. Um, <laughs> yeah, occasionally, well, uh, once in a blue, one, not not even once in a blue moon, we will see guys like Jungle Boy on a dark. We will see Eddie Kingston. We will see, you know, Mox w- w- once every once every month and a half. A guy like Moxley or Adam Cole, Orange Cassidy. We do see these names showing up on Dark and Dark Elevation, and you're. I'm kind of starting to realize that maybe these shows are actually there for the green talent. For these young people who, hey, we need to always be thinking about what's next, looking for the next biggest performer, but they need reps. These guys need to go out there and actually work. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's definitely, I think, Cause, point of dark and dark elevation. Like, from what I've heard regarding the current NXT model from AC Dirt and other respect, uh, respected people, reporters in the field is that like they work the whole week on the match or you know at least a portion of the week on the match you know uh they have eo tiffany stratton booked for next week great we're gonna practice this match for five days so that when we go out it's a little more polished but we don't actually get a crowd response to how how it's gonna go over yeah. So then we end up with this. Io Shirai and Tiffany Stratton have pro- we're probably practicing this match spot for spot for four or five days, but then you just kind of hope the crowd likes it. Yeah, <clears throat> I just thought it's kind of weird that uh, you know it's only her second match and she's already losing. You build her up a bit, do these segments. And, we had the weeks you know. of promos, yeah, those little uh, you know kind of like vignettes or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, maybe that's what she needs. She's like, okay, maybe I need to regroup myself here. and Maybe daddy needs to spend some more money on me. Well, and I guess that's the double-sided thing, right? So it's either you put two green performers in the ring and just have one of them win. Or you take somebody incredibly established and someone who's green and then just have the established performer go over. You know, I guess those are kind of like the two ways to do it. Either have like a guaranteed shitty match with two people who don't know what they're doing or make something out of nothing with somebody who does know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, uh, after this, we had uh, some sort of special musical performance uh, from Ollie J. I've never (laughs) heard of her. Never heard of her. Uh, Yeah. I don't think she's that well known. I think... Like, looked her up. She doesn't really have that many followers or anything. She's, I don't know, maybe she's trying to be, like, a homegrown talent or, uh, I don't know. Either way, she performs her song, Carmelo Anthony, or, uh, (laughs) Carmelo Hayes, and, uh, (laughs) what did I say, Anthony? Isn't that a basketball player? Carmelo Anthony, basketball player, of course. Uh, Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams, they were there just dancing and doing the hype, but, uh, she's no poppy. I'll tell you that, this Ollie J. She's no poppy. Yeah. Maybe Damn. she's like a wrestler in disguise, and this is their way of introducing her. Oh, okay. That <laughs> one's not bad. I don't know. But I don't know if she can wrestle with um, uh, her enhancements. Because eh. I know they can. people have had implants burst and stuff before. Yeah, it does it's happen. Dangerous. One of the risks. It's dangerous. One of the risks. Uh, anyways, this Ollie J, I don't know. It happened. It was there. But let's go to the main event. We got Cameron Grimes taking on Tony D'Angelo. Winner gets a North American title shot at Vengeance Day. So, uh, yeah, nice main event here. Evenly fought bout. Uh, Tony pulling out those big suplexes. Just tossing Grimey around nearly on his head. Uh, Yeah, but Grimes, he's able to hit that, that awesome, that shooting star press power slam movie does. I still don't think it has a name, but it's just crazy. Just like runs into you, turns inside out. I don't know. Yeah, I don't Love know. I, I'm not. Yeah, you're better at names <laughs> than I am, anyways. Unless, unless, <laughs> unless uh, Excalibur says it directly, I have no yeah. clue what it is. <laughs> uh, Tony, though, just another this vicious suplex, throwing Grimes like into the ropes. He just bounces off, almost on his head. Uh, but then Grimey gets the second win. Just. Goes on a roll, looks to hit the cave in, but Tony rolls out to the floor. So Grimes says, okay, I'll put on my hat, I'll play to the crowd. And the ref's just like, hey, no hats. So the ref's distracted with Grimes. And 
Uh, outside the ring, Pete Dunne shows up, smashes Tony in the hand with a cricket bat. So Tony's hurt, rolls back into the ring, right into the cave in from Grimes. So good old Cameron Grimes has earned himself a North American title shot. Hee-haw. Yeah, and he deserves to go all the way to the moon. Win the belt. To the moon! Yeah, this was another uh, similar kind of example of that, uh, you know, like we just saw before. Yoshirai and Stratton. Grimes, Tony D'Angelo. Cameron Grimes is clearly the performer here. He knows how to work. He knows what he's doing. Uh, he is the NXT veteran. <laughs> he is the veteran <laughs> of, of this whole organization. One of the few left, yeah. Uh, so far, and um, I guess Tony Angelo and Peter Dune, not done yet? Not quite. Not quite done yet. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Pete Dunne's been doing dark matches and main event matches, so who knows? Maybe we'll see him in the Rumble as well this Saturday, and this is his blow-off feud. We'll see. Yeah, I'm still scared to how the the little man fits in. Up on the main <laughs> roster, right? Peter Dunn, you know, Peter Dunn, we love him, but he is not the uh, traditional Vince McMahon type uh, of performer, right? We know that, I mean, we know Vince doesn't like accents, so <laughs> we can't give a promo. Uh, there's no 205 live, so he can't be a cruiserweight. I'm sorry. with Paul Heyman. <laughs> Put him with Heyman. <laughs> There you go. Uh, but that was NXT 2.0 from the hot state of Florida. Yeah. But uh, you know what? The beaches of Florida, do they compare to the beaches of Cleveland? Cleveland, Ohio? <laughs> they must. Uh, because I'm pretty sure Lake <laughs> Michigan makes its way over uh, into Ohio. So if we're, if we're talking about the hot beaches in Ohio. Of course, you know that we're talking about Beach Break this year. All Elite Wrestling Dynamite. AEW. All Elite. They coming for you, Vince. Better watch out. It's too sweet. That's right. Um, I don't think we had... Did we have Bash at the Beach before? But when, Is this our first Beach Break? No, I think this is the second Beach Break. Okay. We've had beach-related stuff, yeah. Be- the yeah. beach has been involved before. That is correct. Yeah. Uh, not as much this year for the set, though. We had like a couple lawn chairs, umbrellas, surfboard or two. Yeah, not there was there was one of those uh, <laughs> just kind of like a tanning bed. Yeah. Type of thing. Like uh, yes. You know, someone was out there. Uh-huh. No, whatever. So I think they cut outside. Wasn't there like a live shot? It was snowing. <laughs> yeah, at one point there was a promo with Ricky Starks <laughs> and Powerhouse Hobbs and uh, Tony Schiavone there, and they're on the beach in Ohio, <laughs> and they're all fucking bundled up. Yeah, so funny choice. Which uh, was also funny break. because at one point we get a promo and, and, and just, you know, kind of like a quick video of Orange Cassidy and Adam Cole coming face-to-face on a sunny beach, presumably filmed somewhere in Florida. Uh, (laughs) I'm like, yeah, that's the beach break we're talking about here. But uh, I guess not. doesn't matter. It does not matter at all because we're kicking off with some excellent wrestling here. Cody Rhodes taking on Sammy Guevara in a ladder match to determine the undisputed TNT champion. So we got two belts hanging above the ring there. And uh, lots of time given to this one. 25 minutes and uh, they just didn't stop the action, you know. Start off in the ring, just kind of regular wrestling, but uh, it doesn't take long before they're out into the crowd. Uh, Sammy hits a big springboard cutter off the guardrail onto the floor inside the crowd. Uh, And then, of course, we get back into the ring. We get the ladders in play. Uh, Both men climb up. Cody hits a big sky-high superplex to Sammy. His feet even hit the belts on the way down. Huge superplex there. That was uh, ma- that was just that was just the first of huge was, yeah. spots. We're we're just getting warmed up, but I wondered what if uh, on the way down his foot hooked the belt and he got the belt right there and then what when you win? Imagine that someone hanging there by his legs. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Cody, uh, you know, throughout the match doing little things, kind of acting heelish, like he just tips the ladder over, lets it fall onto Sammy, and. Uh, yeah, a lot yeah, of they, a lot of gloating. A lot of that just kind of like yeah, hands gloating. in the air, look at me go. Yeah. 
he takes a ladder, flips it upside down. So it's like a giant V, and then he picks Sammy and just tosses him into the middle. And the thing just pinches shut on him. So it's just more craziness to come, though. We're still not done. Cody climbs the ladder towards the belt. Uh, Sammy starts climbing up on a separate ladder. He stands on the very top and then jumps, grabs Cody midair with a cutter onto the way down. Crazy bump. One of the biggest Holy cutters shit. I think we've ever seen. Very well could be the biggest cutter of all time. A well-deserved, holy shit. 10, uh, 12 feet, maybe? And there was yeah. a lot of... The crowd was super split, I thought, this entire matchup. We had a lot of, let's go, Sammy, Cody sucks. And then sometimes you were getting some, like, I can't tell what they're saying type yeah, of stuff. I mean, yeah, both Ben kind of, uh, you know, has some, you know, uh, the crowd against them in different ways. But uh, the more they delivered, the more the crowd just got hyped. And, uh, yeah, they were cheering for everything by the end. They still had more to give here. They uh, they once again climb up separate ladders, but this time Cody grabs Sammy, hits a crossroads off the ladder. So another holy shit moment. Uh, Sammy's down. He's out. Cody climbs the ladder. But then all of a sudden, Sammy just springs back to life, runs up, uh, jumps onto Cody's back. And then at this point, both men, they grab the belts. They're just dangling midair. And I like how the ref just moved the ladder out of the way. He's like, oh, I'll let them dangle. <laughs> <laughs> he did one. And, of course, you know, you got to put over commentary, who also mentioned uh, JR said, oh, I'll, I'll move the ladder uh, for safer for the performers. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, so that's all. Thanks, JR. Thank you. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, both men fall down. Cody's starting to get frustrated here. So uh, he traps Sammy's leg in between a ladder and just starts slamming down onto it. So... Fuego Del Sol runs out because he wants to stop this violence. He's like, come on, man. You're not even going for the belt. You're just trying to kill my friend. Uh, but Cody's not listening. He hits Fuego with a Tiger Driver 98. Uh, but then Sammy's recovered, comes flying in, hits Cody with a GTH. And then he lays him down across a ladder that's been set up between the, the ring and the barricade. Climbs up another ladder. Hits a big swanton off the top onto Cody. Bounces hard off of him. The ladder does not break. Oh, my God. I'm not sure if that thing was supposed to break <laughs> or either that or, like, Sammy landed, like, three inches too far. Because that thing did not break and he bounced right off. <laughs> yeah. It, like, turned the Swanton into a 450 the way he flipped off. It was him. almost it was like he <laughs> almost landed on his feet just, you know, kind of because of the height <laughs> of the ladder and stuff. I'm just looking at it like, woo, fuck. Yeah. So... Both men on their last gasp now. They're climbing up the same ladder, exchanging punches at the top. Sammy grabs the belt, slams it into Cody's head, knocks him off the ladder. So he's all alone, and he's finally able to unhook the belts. So Sammy Guevara, undisputed TNT champion. Amazing match. Yeah, this was incredible. This was uh, this was so much fun. They had, uh, they had both... Um, yeah, just fucking... Yeah, this was brutal. Brutal, and the right guy went over. You know, what does this mean for Cody Rhodes? Who the hell knows? There was a point in this, though. Um, so I guess when Sammy, or sorry, um, uh, yeah, Sammy Guevara, he's up there, and he grabs the first belt, and he has it. And then Shivani says, oh, he's got one. As if he's like, oh, <laughs> as he's, if you need both. As if you need both. And then the bell rings right after he took up the first one. Yeah. Um, which I was like, okay, I'm fine with that, you know, but I, I would wonder, and my question was you, I guess, because, you know, these types of unification, I, I can understand these things happen. Has it ever happened, Mike, to your recollection, in a similar situation, but they only get one, and then the other guy gets <laughs> the other, and we're kind of back where we started? Not to my recollection. It, yeah, it could have, um, it, it may have happened somewhere, you know, it's, it's, this is a big world, and it's a big sport. Yeah. Uh, but as soon as Shivani said he had one, my mind was like, "Uh oh, what if Cody gets the other s somehow?" <laughs> no, that's the you know, like you're at the top, you get one ladder gets pushed over, you fall off. Other guy climbs up, grabs the other one. Now we're yeah. both in the same position. Uh, I'm sure one day we will get that. One day that'll be the fucking swerve yeah. of the ladder match for sure. <laughs> uh, because a ladder match, you know, because it, it doesn't have the DQs, it it it, it has all the things where the winner is so. 
often, you know, it's 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 the clear winner. You know, it is meant, yeah, to unify a title, an undisputed champion, something to do with that. But then to swerve us with having it like, uh-oh, we don't know who won. Uh, <laughs> that'd be a whole other thing. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. Well, fantastic is what this match was. You could you could have thrown that on any pay per view in the world, and yeah, an early match of the year contender. I'll even yes, say. possibly. There you go. But yeah, we've got a long way to go. Uh, after that, we had Wardlow taking on Elijah Dean and James Alexander in a uh, two on one. Does not matter though. Wardlow is, destroys them both. Symphony of power bombs sandwiches them together and just. Pins them both for the easy win. Well, yeah, because we got to get our uh, we got to we we got to start our Wardlow winning streak back up. Of course, he lost uh, the week prior to Punk. Yeah, uh, and his only other single loss before that, um, in recent memory, um, was the this past August actually against uh, Chris Jericho as as one of those labors. Yeah, Wardlow's a winning guy. Yeah, and I mean, week by week, that baby face turn is getting closer. Yeah, we'll see a Long. little. We'll see a little more of Wardlow uh, a little bit later too. Yeah, but uh, in the meantime, we got some six man tag action: Daniel Garcia and Two Point taking on Chris Jericho, Santana, and Ortiz. Uh, with Jericho quite possibly literally fighting for Santana and Ortiz's loyalty here, they've expressed lots of frustration going on and. Uh, uh-huh. They display it in the match, you know. They're kind of like avoiding tagging him and, you know, tagging behind each other's backs and things like that. So, yeah, lots of tension there. Uh, yeah, Ortiz just kind of gets worked over for a while. Jericho's fresh. He's looking for the hot tag, but Santana intercepts it, steals it. Commentary team's just noting the disrespect being shown here. Uh Jericho jumps off the apron, looks for a second like he might walk out on the team, but instead he ends up hitting the Judas effect from the floor, and then Santana hits a pile driver to get the three. And then, uh, yeah, then he jaws a bit at Santana and Ortiz, uh, kind of a bit, as he starts to exit the arena. You know what? Um, Yeah, this was fine. I think for me personally, it's weird to to push push guys like 2.0 and Garcia on television, because we've seen these guys on TV a lot, um, I feel like only to be used as the guys um, in the kind of very slow separation of the inner circle. Yeah. Um, You know, kind of like bit players, because the story was about, you know, of course, Santana, Ortiz. Well, I mean, I honestly, I think the real story was about Chris Jericho's real hair. Uh, his to- uh, the to- Chris Jericho's totally natural hair was the main player of this story. Yeah, no, uh, it does seem kind of like uh, yeah, for this team to be the team that causes the split is kind of weird. After all they've been through. Yeah, and it is just wondering. Yeah, how is the turn going to happen? Because uh, of course, um, commentary was also putting over that the inner circle is not just. These three members, however, uh, Jake Hager hasn't had a match since n- November 13th wow. of 2021, and of course, Sammy Guevara has been off with actually winning fucking titles. <laughs> He's been yeah. off doing something important, for God's sake. Uh, so it will be interesting to see if and when this happens. Very exciting to see where creative goes with it, though. Yeah, I'm excited for Santana and Ortiz, I think. It will be for their betterment, uh, be on their own, or even stick with Eddie Kingston as, you know, kind of their... Very much so. Well, hey, sh- shooty winners. They, they, like, these are not just... This is not just your average tag team. No, these are match of the year champions. Yeah. Can't take that away from them. You can't take away a shooty. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fellow shooty winner, we got CM Punk coming out next uh, to do one of the things he does best. Cut a promo. But that's not what he wants to do. He says, I'm sick of talking. I'm dressed for a fight. And it's true. He's got the gear on and uh, he's got a hoodie, which he unzips to reveal MJF's scarf, which he snagged last week during their confrontation. And Punk says, hey, you know, maybe this scarf is sentimental to him. Maybe he can challenge me to a match to win it back. But then I went on Google and saw you can get a 12 pack on Amazon for five bucks. So just as cheap as his personality. I want MJF right now. 
So MJF comes out and he's wearing a replacement scarf, so nothing lost there. Uh, he says no to Punk's challenge. I'm not going to waste it on Cleveland, Ohio. But MJF says, I will give you the match you've been waiting for next week in Chicago, Illinois. CM Punk versus MJF. So it looks like we're finally going to get it. Uh, I mean, you know, unless MJF does some MJF shit, <laughs> then yeah, we are in fact getting it. And not only that, uh, on free TV, we had met, we had mentioning Revolution might feel like a little too long. A little too far, yeah. A little too far, exactly. You know, because I think that's actually towards the end of March. Uh, hey. But we are going back to Chicago, and Mike, if if... CM Punk were to take his first loss in Chicago. I think no better place to take I his first I think there is no better place <laughs> for him to lose. Yeah. yeah. So MJF agrees, just slings a couple more insults, says, I'm going to make you lose and leave wrestling the way LeBron left Cleveland, which still gets a nice reaction, even though he came back and won a title. But people are still, I don't know, whatever. They boo it. Of course, <laughs> right? You know, I mean... Uh, I was trying to think who's left the Leafs. Well, it's different. If someone left and came back and won a cup, I think everything would be okay. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. LeBron left Cleveland twice. <laughs> yeah. If he, but if he doesn't win that title, the whole thing. The whole thing would be different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't like LeBron to begin with, so I don't care. Instead but, of one of the... Uh, Possibly the best performance in NBA Finals history. If he didn't have that to his name. Or one of the biggest choke jobs in NBA history. Which one was the choke? Oh, the uh, 20... Golden State Warriors? No, I'm saying... Oh, for Golden State. Yeah, for Golden State. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, no, LeBron has choked many times. That's uh, like he said, which one? Well, I thought you were saying, yeah, which Finals (laughs) appearance was the choke? I guess maybe the one against... Yeah, the first one against the Mavericks. Uh, Anyways... Wrong sport. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> this is not ball talk. This is not ball but, talk. Uh, yeah, anyways, just more, you know, jabs. Punk 2014, you know, showed. Turn your back on the fans. Uh, anyways, Punk, yeah. Wasn't quite as good as some of their past promos, but still a couple good lines here and there. Mm-hmm. But uh, eventually, MJF brings out the pinnacle. They all beat down Punk, nail him with a chair, and then the order ward load a powerbomb onto a chair. Uh, and then to add insult, MJF just goes and sits right on top of his chest, cross-legged, and tells him, I'll see you in Chicago. Um, now, I don't know if you got this vibe. Um, of course, yeah, when everybody came up to beat up CM Punk, they say, you know, when MJF started coming, the Wardlow powerbomb him, powerbomb him, he hesitated at yeah, first. Yeah. And I'll be honest to say, too, that was not a hard power bomb. That was almost Kevin Nash style. I'll just <laughs> let you fall, uh, type of thing. He really didn't want to do it, and he did the bare minimum that he had to do uh, to kind of appease MJF or anything like that. Um, I think yeah. If either MJF wins next week or Wardlow turns on MJF and Punk's and Punk wins. It's I think one of the two is coming. One of the two has to be coming. All these guys are super hot right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. You can't just have Punk win clean just like that. So hopefully one of those. Yeah. I don't know, but either way, they've got us hyped for a big match next week in Chicago. Amen. Uh, we go backstage where Julia Hart uh, is hanging out with Griff Garrison when Mark Sterling approaches with a big offer. Says uh, Jade Cargill is willing to give you her first uh, title defense. Or second, I don't know, her next title defense. Uh, but Griff Garrison's like, I don't know, Julia, your eye, you know, it's not good. But she's like, back off, Griff. I'm doing my own thing. And she signs the contract. So I like it. Don't let that fucking Griff Garrison tell you what to do. <laughs> that motherfucker, Griff Garrison. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because, yeah, Julia Hart, I'm still on the uh, the House of Black train with Julia Hart. Me so. too. Yeah. I want to see that black eye under the patch. I want to see what's going on under there. And I want lead, I want I want stables to be to expand. <laughs> stables don't yeah. have to be one sex, people. Come on. Yeah. Uh then we get some women's action. Layla Hirsch taking on Red Velvet, 
who uh, has Red Velvet snuck her way up into number one ranking. And Layla Hirsch, number two as well. So battle for the top spot here, kind of. And uh, yeah, match was okay. Crowd a little quiet early on, but they woke up a bit later for uh, rooting for Velvet. As Layla Hirsch, she's just been acting heelish these last little while. And uh, yeah, more of that here when Velvet goes for a big kick. Layla ducks, rolls her up, grabs a big handful of tights to get the dirty three count. The dirty, the dirty three. Real dirty. And she wasn't done being an asshole. She attacks Velvet after, for no reason, just so Statlander ends up to chase her off. Snap, Statlander comes out because she's the good one here. Yeah. Uh, then Tony Schiavone introduces Britt Baker, who comes out to the ring, and uh, they've got her PWI awards, uh, co- magazine covers. They got lots of stuff set up. Uh, and then Britt just kind of cuts a promo. And the crowd was chanting for something. I couldn't even tell what they were saying at one point. I don't know. Did you? Um, I also didn't quite catch it. What I'm thinking um, is that uh, uh, the Steelers beat the Browns. Oh, yeah. At one point, she said something about Baker Mayfield. She's like, I'm the superior Baker. Yeah, Britt Baker Mayfield. Uh, so I, I, I imagine whatever they said had to do was it was a Pittsburgh-Cleveland beef. Yeah. That was my biggest guess. I mean, the the whole thing, the promo felt kind of pointless at the end. Because, yeah. like, nobody, nobody even came out to stand up to her. She just kind of shit on everyone and left. Yeah. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah, it would almost be, like, the only thing keeping this from, like, a, like a total F is just that Britt Baker has confidence <laughs> on the microphone. So you're like, okay, you, you're doing yeah. it. Uh, but it yeah. felt like a, a segment, yeah, designed to crap on Cleveland uh, rather than getting over other other competitors. Does that make yeah. sense? Weird. Uh, but let's go to the main event match. We've got Adam Cole taking on Orange Cassidy, and they lights out. Anything goes... So big expectations here. We've seen some some blood baths, some crazy weaponry, and the, I think it's only the third or fourth lights out match we've had here in AEW. Mm-hmm. So uh, right off the bat, Orange Cassidy shows he's not messing around. He takes off his sunglasses and just crushes them in his bare hands. Uh, yeah, we just come out swinging. They fight to the floor. Uh, <clears throat> Cole goes under the ring to pull out a chair. But attached to it was this uh, Dan Housen, mm-hmm. this face-painted, mysterious man. Do you know this guy? Okay, so I do, and I take it that you don't. I know him kind of by name, but not much other than he's like a, I don't know, he's like a, a spooky guy. He does curses people. So, and... yeah, so he's a, uh, yeah, so he's like, an, he's an indie, uh, you know, an indie guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's on the independent scene. He kind of has this, uh, you know, the, the face paint. And his bit is kind of like he's German. Like, if you, like, he, he you know, he interviews, he does all these sorts of things. Uh, and he talks, like, with, like, a German accent, kind of. Is he German? Or no, he he's American. He's super American. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, he, I think he's just like a thing. You know, he 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 shows up at wrestle cons and things like that. I think the fans really like him. Okay, yeah, yeah. He, I know uh, there is some like yeah, I know him by name, so he has a like some sort of reputation. yeah. Well, uh, Ring of Honor, <laughs> he was with Ring of Honor uh, for the past few years, and of course, you know, they have gone under. Um, so he showed up here. <laughs> yeah. And uh, no physical contact. He just kind of points. Does this scary? I don't know. Is he hexing him? Is he putting a curse on? Uh, that's his pose. That's his pose. Okay. Yes. So he does that. Uh, I think after the show, Tony Khan announced he is signed. So he is officially all elite. He's officially so all elite, baby. Yeah. He does this thing. He always talks about himself in the third person. Uh, also, kind of thing. He refers to himself as Danhausen. Like he's like you know <laughs> shit like that. Oh. All right, yeah. He, I'm looking forward to. He's fun. More his uh, his uh, his uh, I think his his like tagline is very nice, very evil. <laughs> well, we'll see. See more of him. I'm sure next week. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, but then back to the action. Cassidy uh, picks up Cole, spine busters him right through the timekeeper's table. Uh, and then he goes for the orange punch, but Cole blocks it with the ring bell. 
So that's damaging Cassidy's hand. I think he even cut it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. There was bleeding bit from of his blood, hand bit somehow. Of blood there. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, then yeah, so Adam Cole follows up. He stomps the injured hand into a into the steel steps and uh, pulls out a garbage can, puts it over his head, super kicks him. Uh, we get chains, fire extinguishers, the old uh, two chairs set up like a table, which Orange Cassidy picks up Cole, hits it with a Mooch, Michi Nuku driver on top of it. And then that's when the uh, members of the elite and the best friends come pouring out and uh, they start brawling everywhere. And Orange Cassidy hits the beach break, but Cole kicks out. So Cassidy fires up, hits the orange punch, but he's in agony because of the injured hand, so he can't make the cover. Uh, so instead he goes to pick up Cole. But then Cole swings up with a low blow, hits him in the balls, but then Cole is the one who starts selling it, screaming in pain. And Cassidy pulls out a steel cup out of his pants. I think it might have even had a thumbtacks on the front. There was, sure. there was, and uh, <laughs> J- uh, JR brought that up for sure. Yeah, so nice clever move there. Uh, and then he steals one out of Adam Cole's paybook, hits a Panama Sunrise, but Cole kicks out. So Cassidy grabs the chain, wraps it around his hand for another orange punch. But Cole sees this and rolls out of the ring, uh, starts running away up the ramp. So Cassidy follows. They go to the gorilla position at this point. Uh, Cole picks up Cassidy, hits an attitude adjustment, breaking him through a table, makes a cover. Cassidy kicks out. So they fight their way back onto the ramp. Cole's looking to hit the boom, but orange, he pops up and just super kicks him. Wraps the chain up around his hand once again, and this time, uh, or no, yeah, he doesn't hit it yet because Cole picks up one of the stage lights and he hits Orange in the head with that. Uh, then he starts climbing the entrance tunnel, but before he can do anything, Cassidy appears behind, low blows Cole. Uh, so they're both standing on top of the tunnel here, and Cassidy decides to bring Cole in for a hug so he can't escape, and then jumps off the top. Both men crash down through the stage. Uh, Cassidy lands on top of Cole, so the ref just makes the count. Gets the three. Orange Cassidy gets the big win. Gets the big but, win. Yeah, but it doesn't doesn't count for the records. Well, the and, I, and, I, and I think that's it. I think when you, especially uh, AW has set this precedent of what a lights out unsanctioned matches, right? Between, of course, under Osprey Baker. I think prior to that was uh, the Moxley Omega match, I think was also a lights out unsanctioned thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think we have ourselves, you know, kind of like this precedent of like, oh, this is going to be violent. This is going to be bloody. Someone's going to be leaking. And although, well. although, yeah, although we were missing elements of that, I think really to keep Adam Cole protected. Yeah, for that, I think that was the main point, so it doesn't count as a loss on the record, because it was a bit, you know, we didn't get that ultra-violence that we come to expect with the lights out, so a little bit underwhelming in that regard, but, Mm -hmm. you know, they still worked hard, that big bump at the end, the slow-mo replay made it look pretty crazy, like Cole got rotated midair, almost landed on his head. Yeah, but. and it, it's even it even almost like it, it, it's very close to kind of like booking yourself into a corner, you know. You uh, you make a it, uh, you you make an importance, or you know, you make it important that win losses count. You've been saying that since yeah. day one, <clears throat> but then you actually have two people, and of course, when AEW was incepted, they didn't think Adam Cole was going to be there. They definitely didn't think Orange Cassidy would somehow become the biggest wrestler on the fucking planet. <laughs> uh, but it somehow happened, right? So then we kind of, okay, how do we do this ranking system? And boom. And so we're going to see this again. We're going to see lights out matches just to keep both people protected. Yeah, it'll happen. Which, uh, which seems ass backwards, think, but I'm fine with it, right? It's fine. But also I think, you know, we had that ladder match earlier in the show, which kind of... Maybe took some of the wind out of it because I think the latter match had a lot more of the crazier, more entertaining Maybe. stuff. Maybe, yeah, yeah, certainly, definitely. Like uh, there were more brutal parts, I thought, in that. Um, but you know what? I don't remember the last time I've seen Adam Cole take a destroyer. <laughs> but he can fucking yeah. do it. He can fucking do it. He can take them as well as he can give them. So there you go. So there you At go. At the end, it was a fine. It was fun. Fun episode. Beach break. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, probably our last themed show uh, before Revolution. I would think so, yeah. but you never know. So that was the entirety of uh, our weekly wrestling action. So let's get into a little preview for the Rumble here. Uh, first, uh, we'll kind of cover some of these matches and then uh, the Rumble itself. Of course, they'll, they'll probably split up the Rumbles. Maybe one will open the show, one will close the show. They've done that before. Yeah. Also kind of put like a nothing match maybe in between them if you want to open with something else. Um, yeah. So let's say uh, the Women's Rumble. Let's kick off the show with the Women's Rumble. Of course, right now we have 21 of the 30 entrants, which is perfect. I hope we don't add any more. It gives us that um, the option, you know, for people to the surprises, <coughs> things like that. Do you have uh, a few surprises, hopefuls, anything, uh, any any craziness that you foresee? Oh, uh, well, one of the hot rumors going around this week is that uh, Ronda Rousey might be set to make her big return. Ronda Rousey. The Rumble match. Okay, so as soon as her name is involved in any way, shape, or form, uh, she's automatically could be pinned as a winner of the, uh, yeah. of the Rumble. But uh, nothing for sure there. Of course, we have returns of people like Lacey Evans, Bailey, Asuka. I expect at least two of the three would probably be back for the Rumble. Um, and yeah, probably some surprises we haven't even thought of. You know, some NXTs, Io Shirai probably may pop up. Maybe uh, Raquel Gonzalez, uh, Dakota Kai, people like that. And we do know that Mickey James is coming out. She is the Impact Wrestling Women's Champion. Uh, for all we know, there could be other of these uh, former of uh, these of these other uh, former WWE currently signed elsewhere type of performers. Maybe not from AEW. I don't really foresee mm, yeah. it coming from them. Uh, One thing mm -hmm. I did hear that uh, the inspiration turned down a Raw Rumble spot. Oh, really? So, okay. Well, that's probably for the uh, best. Billy, that's what they said. They're like, oh, we got our own thing going right now. It's not the right time. So, yeah, I think aren't they then uh, the current tag? They're the current tag champs Impact over there. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. So yeah, you know, we'll get a couple NXTs. We'll get a couple more surprises. Um, and I guess, what do you yeah. think? So, yeah, I, I like that. Uh, my, yeah, my biggest thoughts were Bailey, Asuka coming back. I didn't even think about Lacey Evans. Um, and then second thing, if I were to think, will the winner come to challenge? And let's say in, a, in the world we are now, either they're going to challenge Becky Lynch for that Raw Women's Championship or maybe they'll challenge uh, Charlotte Flair for that SmackDown Women's Championship if they continue to be the champions at the time of Mania. Um, yeah. Where do where uh, how do you see things going there? Now you've thrown in an interesting caveat with Ronda Rousey, because right, because remember Ronda Rousey <laughs> never lost. Well, I mean she did, but she never was <laughs> pinned for that Raw Women's Championship. If Ronda Rousey were to come back and win the Rumble, you know she's making a B line right for the man. Yeah. So I mean, if she's in it, then yeah, she's got a lot more of a story there than she does with Charlotte Flair, but. At the same time, I mean, this Bianca Belair, Becky Lynch, I mean, the ending we want or need, I think Belair gets that win back on Becky, but she doesn't necessarily have to win the Rumble. Mm -hmm. But once, I mean, going back to back is also a nice accomplishment that very few people have ever done. So, um, I mean, yeah, Bianca Belair, she's still at the top for me, but if Ronda Rousey does appear, then that instantly makes it about a, you know, very high chance she wins. And, I mean, Liv Morgan, she's had a good year. I don't think she'll win, but she's, you know, she's still up there. So uh, I had my <laughs> final four as Liv Morgan, Bianca Belair, Charlotte Flair, and then one of the returnings. And in my mind, the returnings were Oscar or Bailey. So I, I was thinking one of those two women plus the three I just mentioned will be kind of the final four. But like you've said, if Ronda Rousey's in there, fucking she's taking that dub. Yeah. Um... Yeah, one of the names not mentioned here as well, Alexa Bliss. I'm assuming she's going to show up. Like yeah. I said earlier, I think maybe she'll be the one to eliminate Charlotte Flair. Because hmm. Charlotte's already announced if she wins, she's going to pick her opponent rather than challenge for a title. Which would probably be kind of not as exciting. So. Yeah, because she would probably pick somebody like Tiffany Stratton or something. Uh, <laughs> or you know, Aaliyah. If, you're, Aaliyah. if you're smart, you're picking Tiffany. Oh, no, hey, Aaliyah's a world record holder. I wouldn't want to pick her. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's it. We've already announced some of the surprise. Like, the Bella Twins are going to be there. Lita's going to be there. Mm -hmm. So, some legends. But, 
Yeah, either way, I don't think we've had a single bad women's rumble yet. They've all been fun. They've all delivered, and we'll get another good one this year. Next up on the card, we have um, our WWE Championship match, Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley taking each other on. Um, this is a match that I feel like Brock Lesnar is going to go over on this one. Uh, you know, being the babyface and being on this fun run that he is on now. Uh, but then I don't know where that leaves him for Mania. Yeah, this whole this whole thing, I think none of it was the real. I mean, day one, the whole match wasn't even supposed to be. I mean, Brock wasn't have been champion. He wasn't even going to be in the match, so. Plans have obviously changed, and we don't really know where. I mean, the, I think it's still going to end with Lesnar taking on Roman at Mania, but for what title and who's going to be the champ? I have no idea. And how, yeah, it feels bizarre <laughs> to, uh, how we're going to get there, um, but we might get there one day. Uh, what about this mixed tag <laughs> match that we have? We have Edge, Beth Phoenix taking on Miz and Maurice. We've seen these before. The couple versus couple, uh, whether it's Cena, Bella... Or Edge Phoenix. This is a babyface. This is a babyface centric match. Yeah, you know, Maurice will be avoiding as much as she can getting in the ring, and uh, yeah, I mean, Edge and Beth—they've already showed some cool tag team maneuvers together. So maybe it'll be more than just boy on boy, girl on girl. They'll do some some mixing and mingling. Yeah, uh, yeah. But at the end of the day, it's probably the least important match on the card. So probably the least important. Uh, yeah. Next up, though, Becky Lynch, our Raw Women's Champion, taking on Dewdrop, um, who has been in the mix for this Raw Women's Championship between Dewdrop, Liv Morgan, Bianca Belair. They've all been gunning for this, but uh, no sign that Becky Lynch is going to drop this title anytime soon. Yeah, not here, not to Dewdrop, but they can still have a good, you know, 10, 12 minute match and kind of like the Liv Morgan feud, maybe elevate Dewdrop a little bit, and give her some. Yeah, give her a bit more spotlight. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping that Becky Lynch beats up Dewdrop so bad that she goes back to her old name. Uh, you know, <laughs> she gets the shit kicked out of her so bad that she goes back to being Piper Niven. Um, uh, let's get uh, let's let's get out this other singles match. Roman Reigns, our Universal Champion, our record-setting all-time champion guy, taking on <laughs> Seth freaking Rollins. Uh, in what will probably be a great story told here. Although Seth Rollins has been a heel on Raw, he is the de facto babyface in this year matchup. Yeah, and uh, the Usos banned from ringside, so that cuts out one bit of shenanigan there. And uh, I mean, it really all depends on how the other world title match goes. You know, like if Brock loses one, does... Or, if, yeah, if one loses, the other guy wins. I don't think, I don't know. Or do they both hold the belts? I don't know. But I think Seth Rollins is more likely to beat Roman than Lashley is to beat Lashley. Okay, so would you say, uh, that was going to be my next question, out of all three of these matches, the three championship matches we have here on the card, you think that Roman losing is the most likely? Yeah, I guess so. But I still don't even know. Uh, yeah. It's really tough to call. So, yeah, it's but, either, like, Roman loses and then shows up on Raw and says, like, hey, I'm coming after you. Or Brock loses and then comes back to SmackDown and he says, hey, we have unfinished business. Like, it's one of those two options. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because I wonder, because it does, it does raise that question. Like you said, uh, Brock was never supposed to be in that day one match. So what was the Rumble match supposed to be? Was it supposed to be Brock Roman already? Uh, and then... <sighs> Who the fuck? Because that would have been Brock Roman three if they were to actually kind of face the Rumble. Uh, it is really hard to say because remember, because we're still trying to book next year's. We're still trying to book Mania thirty nine for the Rock <laughs> uh, Roman. Yeah, so I don't know. I like it though. I like the intrigue of not knowing and yeah, yeah. So that'll be fun. And then our final uh, match, it could be the headliner, we don't know. But of course, we're talking about the Men's Rumble, 22 of the 30 entrants. So we still have eight to go, um, yep. which leaves eight rooms for surprises or returns. Do uh, Mike, do you have a final four that you have in mind? Maybe someone who you think is going to return? Yeah, well, hopefully, we'll probably see some NXT stars. I hope that we don't see many like retired superstars i think we're kind of past that point uh 
Yeah, I mean, there's always a chance like a Goldberg or something shows up. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, some of these guys like Ciampa, Pete Dunn, I think they'll show up as well. Mm-hmm. Who else has been on uh, these dark matches? It's guys like that, those NXT Ro- alums. Ro- Roddy, maybe? Roddy Strong? Roddy Strong, yeah. Uh, but for like who's going to make it to the finals and win it, this is hard. I don't know. I feel like Big E... Even though I don't think he'll win, you know, he's had, ever since losing the title, he could use a good showing here, make it to the Final Four. Mm -hmm. Uh, AJ Styles, I know you've been calling him as your winner. I think he'll have a really good showing. I mean, he was my my winner before (laughs) Brock won that championship back, you know, kind of before anything. So I think I just got to stick to my guns on this one and still kind of back this AJ train. Yeah. Uh, I think Kevin Owens, I think he's got a shot at having a... lasting a long time in there same with austin theory this mm-hmm. push of austin theories and of course all boss he's gonna be in there he's gonna be wrecking people hey, well he's gonna get the how 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 are they gonna eliminate him type of spot yeah yeah and rk bro riddle randy they're all in there it's gonna be uh it's a pretty good field here but yeah it's hard to actually pick a winner i think much harder on the men's side than it is on the women's side i uh, just because we just because it, it, it almost nothing we're, you know, of course, thinking about Mania, thinking about these two championships, and I can't think of anything that would work with the current championships of that belt. Um, I mean, there's also a chance that Lesnar or Reigns themselves, they lose the title, they enter the Rumble. We've seen that before. Yeah. We have seen so. that before. I think my final four that I had come down to, because uh, obviously AJ Styles, I had Randy Orton, I had Matt Riddle, and then I was really, st- I'm, I'm really struggling with that fourth. Um, whether it be a callback or anything, I think Randy, Randy and Riddle coming into that final four. One of them's going to eliminate the other. Of course, that's a that's a feud that we want, that we all want. Because um, yeah. remember, we do have the chamber between the Rumble and Mania. We're going back to Saudi, baby. We've got the elimination yeah, chamber, and that's. I'm sure we'll have two chambers to determine the women's and men for the other title. That'll be your your other WrestleMania main event thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, but yeah. So are you still sticking with AJ winning this? I got. Match I just. Or? I got to stick with him just because I've been saying it <laughs> this whole time. So I got to stick with AJ taking the win. Um, and but yeah, I have no idea who these other eight could be. These other eight shit disturbers. Yeah. No, I'm excited. Excited. I mean, maybe we'll get uh, Gunther. Does he show up? Uh, Gunther could show up. Exactly. Ilya Dragunov. We haven't seen him. I since, think it's too since... early to bring in Gunther. Uh, Probably. Just because he would still get Walter chance. Yeah. We need it because, uh, like we said, in the CWC, they can kind of control that environment. I'm sure they could come on the PA like, nobody say Walter or we'll fucking kick you out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We'll see, though. Lots of excitement. Can't wait for this show. Saturday night, Royal Rumble. Uh, Going to be a lot of fun going to be a great time as it always is uh and that was our quick little rumble card let's finish off the show uh let's finish off the show that we always do which by giving you a wrestler of the week with the wrestler of the week of the week wrestler of the week of the week of the week the wrestler of the week of the week of the week Mike, I'm going to kick you off on this show. I'm going straight to Dynamite um, for my uh, for my wrestler of the week and straight to that opening match on Dynamite. However, in a wrestling match, in a singles wrestling match, we often consider there to be two competitors in, in, in the match. However, I would like to argue that there is a third competitor in that match especially when it comes to something as dangerous as the ladder match of course i'm talking about the official <laughs> the official plays a huge part in a ladder match making sure everybody is safe and all the little things and the corners and the edges that are sticking out they need to be aware of that shit so the performers don't land right on it i'm giving my rest of the week to paul turner this week um <laughs> 
he was holding down the ladder so Sami Zayn could give that fucking massive cutter. He moved the ladder out of the way at one point so those two boys could have the little hanging spot. Uh, the official is so, so important as where, wherever the ladder's involved. And uh, if you want a pro who knows what they're doing and who's done this a million times before, I'm looking no further than Paul Turner, uh, Wrestler of the Week. There you go. That's yeah. why he's recognized as their senior official. They refer to him as senior official. Over. Take that, Rick Knox. Yeah, you fucking bald bastard. <laughs> no, uh, that was uh, Bryce Remsburg. That's. The <laughs> I mean, they're both bald. But. No, Rick Knox is the cool one, though. Rick Knox is the one who can he's pull. Still bald. Yeah, but he, but he can pull out a destroyer <laughs> every so often if he wants to. Well, I guess so. If his <laughs> opponent. Uh, all right, I'll stick to the same show, same match, different performer. Uh, I'll give it to one who did a little bit more work. Uh, not to discredit Mr. Senior Official of Paul Turner. Of course not. But I'll give it to the new undisputed TNT champion and wrestler of the week, Sammy Guevara. Yes. That's all there is to say. That's all there is to say about that one. Uh, yeah. Still don't know how to spell his name. Is it G-U-E or is it G-U-V? I think it's G-U-E, but... Okay, I'll figure that one out. Uh, I'll figure that one out as we have it. Congratulations to both Sammy Guevara and uh, Paul Turner for your wins this week. And thanks for listening to the show, folks. Rate, review, and subscribe. The show is everywhere. We'll be back next week, uh, next Thursday, with the big Rumble fallout. Mike, it's your favorite pay-per-view of the year. Um, and this year surely will not disappoint. We're back in front of fans. Yeah, thirty thousand plus. I think it's bigger than a standard size arena. So yeah, we're playing. It's, it's where the uh, the Cardinals play. So it's a, it's so the baseball. Louis, it's the baseball stadium. Yeah, or St. Louis or Arizona. Oh, oh yeah, St. yeah, St. Louis. Yeah, I guess two Cardinals. <laughs> hey, I, no, yeah. I, I should have been specific on that one. <laughs> That's fine. So the home of Randy Orton, St. Louis. Oh, okay. I didn't know he was a, uh, which uh, which helps me with my final four little prediction there. Um, having the Rand Man there. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week, and uh, Mike, you take care of yourself. Yeah, I'll see you later. It's